Hello, Cam. Cut him off. <laughs> Thank you guys for joining us on today's wait, episode. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> Can you do the clap? Who's clapping? Oh. There's a lot of loud noises. Thank you guys for joining us on today's episode of Unemployable Podcast. Today we have two special guests Thank with you. us. Damn. All right. So every other guest, every he guest said very, very special <laughs> guest. Very special <laughs> guest. He's like, we got some special guests yeah. today. Thanks, Cam. Thanks for the fanfare. I know he's still mad about the tattoo I gave him. <laughs> so who are they? Yeah. Intro- keep introducing. It's a lot of pressure. <laughs> Whoa, you, first this is off, my first time here. You You've late. done these a few times. You're late. Yeah. Oh, my God. So we have... I was out last night. Come on. You were? How was the Lambo? I didn't go with it. Um, how was the Saturday. Lambo? Yeah. Saturday. I mean, we went around the block. I think he just tried to give me... He said like, going to calm down later. He's tried to give me like six rides a day, I think. Yeah. All right. Anyways, Justin Riley. Yeah. Nice yeah. to meet yeah. you, Justin Riley. Like no Man's Land. Yeah. And... Daniel Pokerny. Oh, my, oh God. my God. Did I butcher that? <laughs> Daniel Pokorny. Pokorny. <laughs> what did you say? Pokerny? 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 Poker tournament. Is that one of those words? Oh, my God. Kim. Is that one of those words you're just like, I've never had to say it out loud. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it sounds like in Antithesis. I usually just say Dan from No Man's Land. Yeah. That's good. Off the I have heard your name drop me. Do like, we need coasters? Yeah. No. Fuck it. No. Okay. This is um. This is like the <laughs> Virgil home table. It's meant to be used. A cute one. But yeah, it's because Cam <clears throat> has met us before, so he's acting. Right. Yeah. But yeah, thanks for the intro. Nice. Yeah. Thanks. You're gonna interview me for a job now. <laughs> Wait, have you have you guys met before? No. no, never met Cam. Oh, you guys have never Consider met. Consider yourself mm-hmm. lucky. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I've seen him. I mean, I've seen him. Seen his face. <sighs> never. Few people close. have seen it. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. And then you know Dan for a little bit, right? Yeah. Cam was asking me um, if he could guest spot at your guys' shop. I was going to let him up till just now when he yeah. butchered my last name. That's kind of what I <laughs> like was like every other person that. in my childhood. Yeah. Is, you, is that you shouldn't? Yeah. You no should one say gets no. my last name right either, though. Fon- I didn't even know your name yeah, was short Fonty? or something. Cameron? Is, yeah. Who's Cameron? I don't know. <laughs> what, Cameron? <laughs> Cameron? Yeah, it's actually just three syllables. When we did that TikTok together, and then, like, as people already mentioned it, like, I was just having fun, like, responding to everybody commenting on it, but it was like, I was like, that's your name? Who's Cameron? Everyone kept saying Cameron. Yeah. Gross. You have a last name? Fonte. I don't know. Yeah, Fonte. Well, people I don't, I don't people call yours. me Font. It's Fonte. not, though. <laughs> It'd be way cooler Fonte? if you were, like, a letterhead. Yeah. Cam Font? Yeah. Is that Fonte? Yeah. That's so boring. Accent. Anyways. It sounds like a <laughs> shitty foreign dessert, you know? Uh, it's always funny when people like a have... canned dessert. <laughs> when people have foreign names and then they pronounce it like a certain way, like foreign names, like all names are foreign, right? But like, and then... Like, I knew this guy that, like, would pronounce his first name, like, an American style, but then pronounce his last name totally, like, in, like, a Polish accent. And it was, like, so really? obnoxious. Oh, my God. Yeah. You're talking about who you worked with? Yeah, this guy I used to work <laughs> with. But it was, like, uh, which we can go into that story later. On the Patreon. On the Patreon. Hey. hey. That's the go Because one. they're not going to pay to listen to that story. So I could drop names. But, um, but yeah, he would, like, <laughs> say his first name, like, totally fine. It'd be like, the second name, be like, blah, 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 blah. And you're just like, yo, stop doing that. Because he wasn't even pronouncing his first name correctly. Right. Like, like it would, I guess would, it would make more sense if you pronounce both the names with the accent. Right? That's my point, yeah. yeah if you're going to yeah. say the whole thing, say the whole thing. Like right. yeah. yeah, full sun. Don't pick the last half to be all flourished. It's like, well, this name originated in Poland. Yeah. But my parents gave me this dumb American name here. <laughs> so I don't give it the respect that it deserves. Basically. But yeah, known Cam for a while, known John for a while. That's for funny. I figured that people haven't met Cam. Like people in the shop are like so excited. They're like, I want to meet Cam, and I'm like, yeah, you, you haven't ta- met Cam yet. You tattooed me before I was even tattooing, or I was just starting. It was a little over a year ago. Yeah, that was when I came down with Vic. That's when John tattooed her face. Yeah, when Vic uh, got a face tattooed by John. I think I was in like my first <laughs> ten. Maybe. What sneakers are you wearing? I got five fifties on. Let me see one of them. <laughs> yo, yo, because pr- pretty much Justin's the one that got me into shoes. Yeah. I don't know if you knew that. What do you think of these? I don't have any five fifties. Um, I do love New Balance. The kids love these right now. They're, yeah, that's a very popular shoe. It's uh, almost like the Panda. 
Yeah. Not as bad, though. Yeah. Cam, Justin, and I are talking. <laughs> I don't know anything about shoes. Um, I just never, it doesn't really do much for me, that right. shoe specifically. Like, you'd um, probably wear it once, right? Like, all right, yeah. cool, I did that look. Yeah. Unless it was really comfortable. They are. I you would know, say they're more comfortable. Sometimes I'm surprised when I get a pair of shoes. And then I end up wearing it as shit, huh? Yeah. And, you know, I got them as but a, you never know. I got them as a tip from a what client. Are you, what are those you're wearing? These They look mad comfortable. The, the Travis Scott Dior, shoes. Dior <laughs> slides. That's kind of cool. So basically he just scribbled, you know, like instead of Dior, it says Cactus Jack. I like that we're all looking right. under the table. Yeah. yeah. We need a camera down there. What do you have on feet? Where's the shoe cam? What? Gotta what do you have on feet? Just the <coughs> OG Travis Scott's? Yeah, that's the best. Those are the best ones. I prefer the lows. Yeah, I was oh, talking to Dan to last night. I had and the lows I was on like, last night, actually. But yes, when yes. I fly, Jeez. it's like, I you know, like I only bring a carry on. So they smell better than John's. How many yeah. shoes can you bring on a carry on? Bro, and like Seth will get me all hyped up. Like, I'll, like, you, like even for the convention, like, I'm like, yo, I'm just going to bring two pairs of shoes. Like, I don't care, whatever. And then he's like, what's the lineup? And I'm like, no, nah, I'm not going to do that. Like, I'm just literally going to bring, I'm going to wear a pair and I'm going to put a pair in my suitcase. And that's it. And I'm just not going to be cool that weekend, you yeah. know? And then like Marquise and everyone, they're like, what's the lineup? What? Mm-hmm. Like all these dudes bringing five pairs of shoes for four days. Oh, yeah, to be fair, so if Justin didn't guilt trip me about, I was going to check a bag. He yeah. was like, why would you check a bag? We're only down there for like a few days. Yeah. That's usually half the reason I'll bring four Five pairs of shoes. Yeah. And like my pillow. Right. I like my pillow. But it's tough because like. Uh, <laughs> you got to think so many days like in advance then. Yeah. Like, and you what am I going to wear? All I your outfits. Yeah. Pair of shoes. Yeah. So now only if two. I'm only, you know, if, if I'm bringing a carry on, it's like I got to pick two pairs of shoes that I could wear anything with. Right. Just that's my easy. point. That's like saying Just what's easy. your favorite song. Right. And or me, you choose like really versatile. Slides do it. And then the black. I brought the black. Um, God, the, the off white. Presto? That's a good yeah. shoe. They're yeah. comfortable. Just the black one. Yeah. Dude, I beat them. It's a yeah. summer beat. shoe. Easy. Just yeah. easy to wear. It's a perfect And the Travis shoe. Scott Lowe's. The, you know, the OG. Have you That's slowed down with the shoes at all? Or not really? I buy my kids' shoes, dude. I buy yeah. my kids' shoes and my girl. How so, many pairs do you think you have right now? Uh, 300 plus. Oh, it, I sold a lot. It, Oh yeah, went down. It before COVID, I had like down. that's yeah. like a reasonable yeah. amount. Three hundred. You doing alright? Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like yeah. Is everything okay? It was crazy, dude. But you need to borrow I, money. Yeah. <laughs> Been collecting shoes since two thousand three. Yeah. So was it tough selling some of them? Two thousand one, actually, dude. I still have Jordans that I bought in two thousand one in high school. Yeah. Uh, they're like old. The fucking um. They're disintegrating. Crumbling. Yeah. They're like, yeah. they just turned yellow from them. being so old. But yeah, I kept them. The foam and rubber just starts falling apart. I have right? New Balance that are pretty old. You know, I wore a pair of uh, the Tassie Devils. It's like a really cool black and purple pair. Great pair, 998. And I wore it to work a couple weeks ago, and the soles crumbled on me at work, dude. Uh, like, uh, like half of the soles uh, flopping off. And I was like, damn. At one point, you couldn't touch that pair for like less than 800 bucks. Yeah. Now, you know, it's the shoe the market's all over and streetwear thing is like all over the place, dude. Right you know, now. like before, I'll give you an example. I bought all my SBs like years, like through the, like 2007 to like 11. I bought so many SBs. Nobody wanted them. Nobody wanted them, dude. And then like 2013, 14, 15. I was buying people's entire collections. Like, I bought one of my friend's collections from Puerto Rico. He just didn't wear them. Dude, I bought, like, 30 pairs of SBs from him, and he gave them all to me between 50 to 100 bucks. Bro, the Heinekens were in it. Yeah. Like, <laughs> crazy, dude. The skunks were in it. Crazy. Then COVID hit. They shut us down. I didn't know what to do. Well, we used to keep a lot of them in the store, too, like this, where we had, like, yeah. display cases and stuff yeah. with it yeah. in there. I actually yeah, I have signed boxes from Todd Bertrude, who designs for Nike SB, does the 420s. So he did the skunks, dog walkers, yeah. all that. I, I think he did the dog walkers. But um, I have signed boxes from him, like, you know, to the shop. Really cool, like yeah. Justin, No Man's Land. 
It's fun to collect shit like that, and it's fun to like display it in the shop. Like your guys' shop is beautiful, and you have not only shoes and and you had clothes at some point. I don't know if you still do, but all the figurines are fucking cool. <laughs> yeah, we have you're buying figurines. other people's artwork, supporting other artists. I think that's huge. You know. Yeah, because I like the shop is definitely like well up to COVID because of COVID. Maybe we had animals and stuff too, but then yeah, the shutdown it was like reptiles, he too. was like, all right, I'm taking my collection out of there. Or you started selling, you started getting rid of stuff too during shutdown because yeah. of you know things or whatever, but. Yeah, and then I have all the six scale sideshow hot toy figures yeah. and stuff like that. And then uh, a lot of art. Yeah. I collect like the cause and bear bricks and yeah. like that. But Me too, unfortunately. Some of that stuff is at the shop. Not much, but we don't. The shop is so full now, dude. There's, right. there's 11 of us. Yeah, we're fully so staffed like, now. So now it's like hard. Like we literally, we. Me and the one artist, Vic, we were just like going through and like pulling stuff out of storage to frame, which should be being framed right now by our apprentice. But like. Just like we do have another apprentice too. We do have a new apprentice, yeah. But then, uh, Brian, well, that's Brian it, though, dude. Like that's the last station in the back corner, and that's it. Like yeah. if we get bigger, you know, it's time for a new building or something. Because yeah. there's what eight artists now. Uh, yeah, eight Tom. tattoo artists, and, and then Tanya Tom, uh, and the manager. How long you guys had the shop? Almost six years. It's gonna be six years in June. Yeah, we opened it together, us, right? Yeah, yeah, pretty much, yeah. Yeah, we made it bigger. With it, was it a was did we get through a year or was it still in the first year? We like doubled the size of the shop by the yeah. second. It was a year, and then like that, like because we opened in June. Then by the f- winter, we were opening the other. Basically, side I was just tired of working for assholes, dude. Like yeah. shitty <laughs> people that didn't care about me or anybody. They just cared about themselves and whatever money you were giving them. You know, the place I learned at was horrible, so I needed to get out of there. Then I started working with Dan, and, you know, that didn't work out. And I was, we were just like, yo, we just need a shop. Yeah. So let's find a location. We had lunch. We sat. We had lunch. What do you guys eat? <laughs> I had a burger. <laughs> nice. I don't decision remember. making meal. Yeah, no, we remember. we literally just went across the street. I, I was texted like, him. I was like, yo, you want to, yeah, you were like. Our stations were next to each other. And I texted him, and I was like, yo, I'm so tired of just sitting like, at like this Like this shop. close? Yeah, dude. Like, just so you don't have to say it out loud? Yeah, well, because, you know, well, cause I funny was, thing, I our was manager booked. now was also the manager at that shop. Yeah. But, you know, I didn't want her to hear. I didn't want anyone to hear, but I was like, yo, he knew. Yeah. I was sitting at this place, dude. Like, there was no sign. Like, the, nobody would even know it was a tattoo shop. Right. It was, like, the number one place. I did it because I wanted to get better. And basically, I sat there, and I just drew Every day for like six months, you know, you know, I don't even know how long I was there. Do you think you were there for nine months or something like that? But I you said, were coming and going because you just weren't busy. I was yeah. still booked out like at this point. I, I started doing there. guest spots. I was going to Cocoa Beach a lot to Mark Longnecker's shop at that time. And just like guest spotting convention. But anyways, it, it was another day that I was sitting there and I was just like texting Dan. I'm like, <laughs> this fucking sucks. Like, I'm so tired of sitting here. I'm opening up a shop. And he was like, oh, you want to go have lunch? <laughs> yeah, it's like, like what I was like, like, my appointment Yo, I want to grab a burger. The train's down? going by, and you're like, I'm going to jump on that train. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> like yeah, yeah, let's go. And yeah. we had lunch, and he's like, you're opening a shop? I was like, yeah, dude. Like, I already, like, took had some numbers and shit. I was like, you know, had he a He was already ready to go. I was number. not ready to go. <laughs> and he was like, you was want like, a partner? <laughs> and I was just like. Yeah, fuck it. Let's yeah. do it. I think it was even more awkward, and I was like, "Can I open it with yeah. you?" Yeah, <laughs> and he was like, "Okay." I was like, yeah. "This is a good burger." So basically, <laughs> like, we we met because he kiss on did it. a cover yeah. up on my back, and then we started working together. So it wasn't like we knew each other. Yeah, for years. Which that part maybe was, a year. Which that part was funny because as we were opening it, we kept talking to everybody. Like when we met, like I think it was like I don't think it was Mark Stewart yet. Was it Mark Stewart? I don't know. No, because we had a different account at first. Yeah, but that's right. People were like, oh, obviously, because, you know, you guys have been friends for a long time. We look at each other like, nah. <laughs> like, well, you guys are really friends now. We're like, eh. Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, we had a burger together. Yeah, I mean, we shared a burger, I yeah, guess. Yeah, chatted next yeah. to each other for six months. Yeah, you know, like, he was my client for a while, you know. And Justin was like, that whole fucking thing, you being my client, was funny, too. Because it's like, he just, like, text, email. He emailed me. He's like, I need to cover up. He sends a picture of his back, and it's crazy because there's, like, 40 tattoos on his back. And he's, it's like, horrible. And he's, like, as someone in the horrible. business. And I was, like, who is this guy? What business is he talking about? <laughs> like, and I look at And I didn't respond to it for a few days because I literally didn't know what to do with the email. Like, I was just showing it to everybody in the shop. I'm, like, 
this guy wants me to cover the back. Like, what do I do? And, <laughs> yeah. And then, like, I think a few days later, you like email me again. You're like, oh, I'm just checking in or something like that. Like, you're like, I didn't respond to you right away or something. And then you like email me again. Followed. I was like, all right. I was like, listen, I don't know what we're gonna do, but I'm just gonna go for it if you're willing to do it. And you're like, hell yeah. yeah. I was like, what do you like? Justin's like, like showing you his back. He's like, what do you think we should do? Dan's like, we should probably just open a shop together. <laughs> <laughs> mm, what's the best way to get out of this? Yeah. Let's go into business. Yeah. yeah. So that's... That <laughs> do you think that'll cover this? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I do. It. How long did I tattoo you before you started working with me? You did my whole back. Um, then you fixed the side of my head. Yeah, that that's That homeboy right. screwed up. And Montgomery. I touched up your... Na- yeah, you're in... We could say names on the Patreon. That one okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we'll yeah, that's true. Names. We're trying Some to be very... Guys, if you guys really want to hear some stuff. Sometimes we're still, we just work the kids, around these people I'll say still. names on this one. Okay. But we'll save it for the Patreon. Yeah. yeah. Well, this was like a friend. Yeah. He was a friend, and he just really Oh, the one up. that you had. Yeah. Uh, a tattoo on the side of my head. <sighs> like What a place bad. to mess up. Really bad, dude. Right. It was bad. Well, I knew it was bad because then I got that like panic email. Because you were working on something else, and I was like, listen, next session... I need you to, like, fix this. It's on the side of my head. And, like, I texted the dude that did it immediately after. I was like, When did you realize it was fucked up? Like, when I looked at it there, I was like, but we were friends, so I was like, I can't. Like, you were kind of sweating it at first? Yeah. I mean, I knew it was bad. Right. But I didn't want, you know, he asked me for the money, like, normal money. Yeah. No, like, friendly crap, which also is whatever, but... You know, as soon as I got home, I was just like, yo, I kept looking at it. I took p- pictures and videos. I was like, yo, this is so bad. Oh, and, man. Uh, I what texted a- him, dude, very nice. And I was right. just like, dude, you like. Suck. If you didn't want to do this, <laughs> you shouldn't have took it on. Like, right. you could have just said no. Was it like onto your face and shit, too? No. Nah, it was just. It was really just the, the head. Yeah. yeah. It was two faces. It was uh, Audrey Hepburn and Judy Garland. That somebody had previously done. It was right. very, very light. Yeah. The foundation was there. He literally just had to like darken the darken features. it, bring some yeah. contrast. And he changed the shape <sighs> of the features, bro. He made them look like little rat faces. I don't oh, know, dude. He man. like shrunk the nose up. The eyes were crazy, dude. What do you have there now? Changed the shape of the mouth. You could literally see the old lips underneath the new lips. Yeah. He, he turned it into like zombie stuff, you know, like. He saved it, yeah. but I was, like, upset, bro. And the dude's response to me was, like, oh, like, just let me fix it. Uh, just let know? it heal. And I was just like, yeah. <laughs> no, nah, man, I'm not yeah. letting you fix it. Like, <laughs> I can't believe you even asked for money for this shit, dude. Like, that's crazy. Yeah. And he was like, oh, like, you're going to act like you don't have other shitty tattoos on your body. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> what a friend. Come on, it, buddy. Bro. What a friend. It's not your first rodeo. That's just, what do you, what did he expect? You're like. Damn, you're right, dog. Like, just another <laughs> one on the my books, bad. bro. Like, you're right. I was yeah. like, bro, Got not me. on my face, not on my head. Yeah. Like, yeah. come on, dude. And, uh, yeah, I was like, dude, I got to pay somebody else to fix this. Yeah. You should fund that. He was like, no, I'm not giving you the money back. And I was like, that's crazy, bro. I, I thought you were a friend, you know? Yeah. Like, this is unfortunate. And he just went back and forth with me. I was like, then he was like, oh, come to the shop. And I was like, bro, keep the money. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, now I know the type of person you are. Like, I, I'm like looking, I sent him the picture. I'm like, you're, could you see what you did, bro? That is horrible. You're going to look at that shit and tell me that looks good? Damn, Justin, I feel like you're critiquing me pretty hard right now, dog. <laughs> <laughs> I feel was, you. I feel you. Bad. Yeah, I feel you. I feel you. But have you looked at the rest of your body? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Which I don't, I didn't really have, like, all right, I had two sleeves. Listen, I'm 37, bro. I started getting tattooed when I was like just turning 18 right there wasn't shops like this right you know what i mean there was like one shop maybe within an hour of you you know i'm in upstate new york so it's like there was like a couple shops in poughkeepsie and then like another one 20 or 30 minutes away so you just went to a shop you know it wasn't like let me check the internet and check a portfolio or right it wasn't whatever. instagram to check yeah. you just went it in just and like it was nearby it was an older dude that was Hopefully probably they have a cool, biker cool designs on the wall yeah yeah some flash and it was like you just got tattooed god forbid you brought your own drawing <laughs> i did to my first tattoo yeah me too and they're I like i brought it fully drawn you can't tattoo that <laughs> that's untattooable because i like use colors people are spoiled oh. now dude you got yeah. you got so many options of like really good 
right. tattoo artist. There's no, I tell people all the time, like, there is no reason for you to have a bad tattoo. Not in 2000. Back in the day, you had to show no up with a whole black piece of paper and be like, I want this on my arm. <laughs> and then they just do the square and not wrap it around yeah. the edges. Well, and that's they're like, like I could do that. Well, that's what we were talking about before, too, how, like, the younger generation, like, this, what a nice tattoo. Look at this. Show that. It was Our, AI. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, like, nice tattoos. Johnny used AI to make Oh, yeah. I've been, we've been using AI to generate reference photos. You guys do that? Mm -mm. No. It's super it weird. Yeah. Yeah, I'll show you later. I mean, it makes sense. That it makes sense. That so, like, generate, like, yeah. original references that aren't on the internet yet. Yeah. You can type in anything. Original references farmed yeah. from the thousands of actual artists. Artwork, yeah, like, yeah. Slash, yeah. slash Imagine, That's you know, King yeah. Fonte <laughs> is a good. fat, whatever, turtle. And then it'll create a photo like that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Then you tattoo it. And my artist will still spend three hours in the back panicking over something. Yeah. Can't just clam. Like yeah, I, it's kind of fucked up that apprentices don't have to get, like, shitty tattoos anymore. I think I'm going to bring that back. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was just your environment, you know? So, like, when I, the shop I started in, it was, like, everyone I worked for, like, spent time in prison. So, it was, like, yeah. they were just, like, we were, like, that was the nicer spot in Brooklyn where I, like, <laughs> apprenticed at. Like, I went to other stuff and, like... I was like, this guy looks like he knows what he's doing, you yeah. know? And then as soon as I started tattooing, he's like, cool, I don't have to tattoo anymore. Bye. And he's yeah. like, but it was like, I remember even just getting like, I just remember even like when I got my lettering right here, they're like, oh, don't waste that spot. They were just yeah. trying to nicely say like, you're not going to get a good tattoo here. You should wait. Yeah. You know, but again, like we were saying, it's like, it was you're just like, how about this spot? They're like, don't waste that spot. You're like, this spot, don't waste like, that yeah, spot. Yeah, literally. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, or you were just thirsty and you wanted to get, see like what it is like with this is like, or like when I came down, we did the TikTok. It was like, I was just here and I was just like, you know, while she was getting tattooed, I was like, yo, I'm bored. Yo, Cam, you want to get tattooed yeah, or whatever? I still have, like, the same mentality as, like, just get tattooed, but I'm just luckier to but work. But the difference is you're surrounded yeah. by good yeah. artists. Like, when you yeah. came in, you were like, what do you want to do? I was like, I don't know. What do you want to do? It was like, creepy girl. And he was like, okay. I was like, done. Yeah. yeah. I was like, let's go tomorrow morning. But that's Wait, what, I mean. what do you mean mentality? Like, I really don't care what I get tattooed. I just want to get tattooed, like, by the you don't care at all. But you know you're going to get a good tattoo. Yeah, exactly. That's just that's what I'm saying. But, but it's, like, same yeah. mentality. If you don't just care. Like, I'm just trying to get tattooed. <laughs> John's like, if you don't care, I'll that. tattoo you tonight. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> or at the Philly convention. Uh, I'll freehand it. Our artist. Uh, like job. Fire. <laughs> 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 well, it's like that, too. What? Oof. You can't say no now. She's not even listening. Yeah. She's probably uh, she's checked out. She's probably drinking hey, what's again. Up? Hi. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> hey. But you know, people in the industry they'll be like that, like do whatever, and then that comes up and then you're like, I don't want to do that. Yeah. But uh or even at Philadelphia, like Victoria was talking to Flip Shades and she was like, I want you to tattoo and he's like he's like, What do you want? She's she's like literally like, whatever. Like, I'll do I'll get whatever. And then everyone turned like, Oh, people say that and then I had to be like, No, we're tattoo artists, we actually know what that means because Right. Everyone knows in this business when the nothing better than when the client says, "Do whatever you want, do your thing." They don't uh, mean it. They're lying. No. You don't mean liar. It. They never mean it. <laughs> well, yeah, you could just be like, "What were you thinking?" Yeah, because yeah. then you show them. They show up, and you show them like, "Yo, this we could do like these are like a few things," but then they're like, "No." I actually want this. And it's like, why did you say get whatever? Yeah. Right. Why you, you knew exactly what you wanted. Yeah, why why now you have this? pictures of what you want. Up, bro. Why didn't you tell me that? You don't mean that. Never. Yeah. Well, now you get kids like this who are just walking around with awesome tats. But that's any of them. That's brand. Yeah. Big. Our whole shop. Yeah. Everyone's got great tattoos. Dude. Like, and we're the old school guys. That this are is like, what I'm going to do. I had do. triple cover ups. From now on. I had to learn, dude. I'd like earn this shit. <laughs> and I want you guys to do this with me. From now on, if you're tattooing a tattooer. Under two years, you give them a shit bag tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, uh, ooh, I'm not gonna be able to finish that leg sleeve on Vic very well then. Yeah, I'm gonna be like, listen, <laughs> I'm gonna bro, think you gotta wait that. a couple years. <laughs> like, there are tons of like crazy famous painters out there that, in my opinion, their paintings are garbage, but their name makes it cool. That's true. I'm like, try to look at it like that, and then I'll be like, <laughs> I got a bad job. And tattoo sick. <laughs> yeah, they're, like, they're like, what from his apprenticeship, bro? They're like, no, last no, week, last yeah, last week still healing. <laughs> Tagged me in it, and right? Like, <laughs> well, that's how you. Well, it used to be like you couldn't trust an artist when you walked into a shop unless they looked like us, just covered in like. Yo, that things. was the yeah. thing. Like when I was learning Season. how to this tattoo, is seasoning. I was the most heavily tattooed person, 
And people would just come in and they'd be like, you know, looking through the, we're going back years, 2000, 2010, air, you know, roughly nine. in there yeah. somewhere. That's 10, when I graduated 11. high school. And they would just be like, <laughs> yo, your, nine. Your, your tats are fire, yo. Like, I want you to do my tattoo. Right, just because like, you're covered, right? You have no idea how bad I am. Right. <laughs> but you're about to find like, out. <laughs> I, like, literally just showed up in this town, Middletown, New York. I had apprentice to Pierce, like, down here in, like, um, Lake Worth in 2008 and nine. But I never apprenticed to tattoo. Yeah. I had to been doing piercings for years. And I just showed up in this town to get out of like a crazy situation I was in. And I had no idea. Any, anybody didn't know anybody. I just showed up at a shop and I was like, you guys want a piercer? Dude was like, just older biker dude. You're like, what do you need? You're crazy. Okay. What gets you me know, money? Drug addict. He was like, oh yeah, you tattoo too? I was like, I've done a few. You yeah. know, I would love to. <laughs> I've seen like, like on myself. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna, yeah, I'm gonna hire you, and you're gonna tattoo too. Pretty and I was nasty just like, with a staple. Hell yeah. <laughs> and he was like, yeah, this is a, you know, he gave me two machines. He's like, yeah, this is like a liner, and it's a coil. Wait, wait, hold on. You know, and he's you got the old right, big ass out. power <laughs> supply. He's like, just turn it up, and you know, and it fucking sounds right. Was it the big gray one where you had to do just the amps and box. stuff too? Yeah, dude, yeah. I had the needle right, to, like, thing on it. it. <laughs> it didn't I had no idea what I was doing. He was like, you're just gonna take like lettering, walk in, and stuff like Looks that. Looks like a fucking radio. And if you got any questions, yeah. yo, like just ask me, and I'm just like, all right, sick, dude. That yeah. was my uh, apprenticeship. <laughs> so <laughs> these people coming in, they're like, yo, your, your tattoos are so sick, dude. Like. <laughs> I want you to do it. I'm like, man, I did like three tattoos. I sure. got you, dog. I got you, I'm going to use the liner and the shader at the same time. <laughs> dude, I got two hands. <laughs> Yo, but he didn't even machines. explain Oh, this is my me. left and this is my right. Yeah. Like, he didn't explain the difference. Like, right. why is this coil a liner? Why is this a shader? Because I said so. You know, yeah. nothing about the springs, nothing. Like, this I didn't one's know. red. He's like, yeah, if you got to adjust it, just, you know, mess with it. Thank God just turn I it already up. apprenticed to Pierce at a shop that, like, really taught me cross contamination and stuff like that because this dude was dirt yeah you know uh smoked newport 100s in the shop all that, day that i miss <laughs> all day bro like him yeah. smoking in the shop the other dude everybody that i didn't do that just smoke <laughs> cigarettes in the shop you open the door and like smoke would just <laughs> out yeah, bro. like sometimes i miss smoking people, inside. like a, Fire like a family would off. pull Ashton up in the to fucking get biohazard <laughs> They'd open the door and just be like, oh, it stinks in here, and just close it and leave. And yeah. I'll be like, yo, you guys need to stop smoking in here. Like, can't, why can't you just go outside or at least smoke in your room? There was different rooms with doors. Yeah. So it's like, smoke in your room. I don't want to smell your shit. Like, when I leave here, I smell like shit. But you know what's crazier? Shit. was the people that opened that door and was like, all right. And stayed. <laughs> yeah. And, and they're they're like, stayed, bro. Oh, like, sick. We can smoke in here. here. Yeah. Yeah. Where's J money? Yeah, but dude, like, that that guy would like you know his station was like one of those cheap, uh, just like cheap countertops, particle yeah. board shit. Yeah, that was his thing. He would set up like a little paper towel. That was a shop standard with a little yeah. like it from metal like a tray and yeah, and like black and white stick tiles. Stick shit there, the dude. <laughs> Ashtray right next to it. No clip cord sleeves. Nothing, dude. Like Need gloves. The touch everything. Dude didn't draw. Right. What'd you want? You got to show him. Yeah, they had to show him what tattoo they liked. And he would print the tattoo out. Somebody else's tattoo on Google. <laughs> trace the shit. And literally, he would tape the picture of the tattoo on the chair or the armrest. And then, like, when he would take his pictures for his portfolio, like, you could literally see the tattoo that he traced <laughs> with the tattoo. Shit, I'm about to give you this. Shit, like, <laughs> almost like, as good. Though. Look at the accuracy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And this man would trace every line. Like, it didn't matter how distorted Call it was. Call me Laser Jet. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. Yeah. Crazy, dude. Crazy. But it got to the point where it was like, you know, I had gotten sober, and I was like, I can't be here anymore. Right. This place is crazy. Like, this dude is just blowing lines in the room, like, in his little office. Not Pil tattoos. Anytime I would go to drop. <laughs> <laughs> Not, tattoos. No. Not tattoo lines. No. <laughs> nah. He blew those, too. Yeah. 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 He blew all, every tattoo. <laughs> See, that's a real apprenticeship, Cam. Yeah. You know what's funny? And then like not having one. <laughs> I just had to do apprenticeship. I had to like learn by, right. by messing up, dude. But like I wanted to get better, so I started like 
hanging out with other people that did tattoos. That's what it was. In the yeah. area. And, yeah. like, you know, hit, Dan started tattooing me. And How did you get um, clients? How did I get clients? Yeah, like early on. They just came. Yo, for some reason, people came to this shop. I don't know. That's it what I'm saying. There. The people that walked in. It was just like. Because you were was, just the local spot. It was a right. busy walk-in like. shop. Yeah. Right. And I made a lot of money there, dude. Yeah. I did piercings and tattoos. I made a lot of money. And, you know, I start, like, I was the only one that actually drew there. So I would sit and draw, and people liked me. I was, you know, I was heavily tattooed. And they would just be like, I want him. But the owner started getting mad because people would come in, and they would be like, is Justin here? And <laughs> yeah. he'd be like, yeah, he's busy, though. You know, his, but I'm here. Newport yep. 100 hanging out of his mouth. He's yeah. like, yeah, but he's busy. I'm the owner. And they'd be like, all right, well, I want to get tattooed by him. And he was like, nah, he's busy. I already got Google I'm ready. the owner. I'll, I'll do your tattoo right yeah. now. And they'd be like, uh, That's but okay. I came here for Justin. And he's right. like, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I'm the fucking owner. Right. Just like that, bro. Therefore the best. And yeah. then these people would like, be just like scared and they just get tattooed by him. But it, it's one time specifically. You somebody that? had That's booked. marketing. Somebody booked marketing. with me, and I drew the shit, and they just didn't show. So I hit, you know, I messaged her, and I was like, "Hey, like, you know, why didn't you show up?" And she was just like, "I don't know." Like me and my mom read the reviews about that shop, and I was like, "Yeah, I know. Like the owner sucks. The shop is whatever." But I have my own room. Yeah, that doesn't. Oh mean, my god, like, damn! It's every podcast, dude. Every page. podcast. <laughs> and uh, you know, she was like. Well, maybe you should work at a better shop. Turn them off. And then that really hit me where I was yeah. like, yeah, yeah, this is definitely like affecting me <laughs> poorly. Like I can't stay here anymore. Right. I kind of, I felt bad. Like I ran the shop for him, bro. Like his wife died and he kind of lost his mind. Bro, it's so tough. I opened and closed leaving. this man's business. I ran yeah. it, bro. Like he would ask yeah. me, dude, the internet would get right. shut off the phone. He would ask me to borrow money, dude. It was crazy. I like... I literally rented the apartment above the shop from him. So I was like paying the bills. Yeah, yeah. But I wasn't getting paid. Like, you know, it's not my shop. So I'm getting my percentage. I wasn't getting more for running yeah. this shit. I felt, and I just felt bad because, like, I felt like I owed him something because he let me learn there. No, yeah. Well, that's what know? keeps a lot of people in the but first spot. Right? It was, it was bad, dude. Yeah. It was getting bad. He hired some, some dude, really crazy drug addict, and I told the dude, I was like, don't hire this dude. Yeah. He doesn't even know how to tattoo. He's like, oh, I'm going to teach him. Really good artist. And that's how I got started. Dude was really good. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how me and Justin met. I took a spot as soon as he left. <laughs> he was a great artist, but he just didn't know how to tattoo. Nobody yeah. taught him. And he just let this dude start tattooing. I was like, bro, this is a bad idea. I'm telling you. I know this dude. This is not a good idea. And uh, How I long were you working up. for him like, at, at that moment? Uh, I was there. I had to have been at that shop from like 2010 to like 2014. Oh, so, little, little oh, too yeah. long, bro. Yeah. Too long. And, uh, you know, I lived upstairs. So I heard like this dude was downstairs, like tattooing or some shit. I don't know. But then I seen an ambulance pull up and I was like, yo, what the fuck is going on? So I went down there. The dude was overdosed in the shop. Damn. Just like. Is that unusual? Like in the chair. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm That's like, how my apprenticeship went. He's in yeah. there. He's overdosed. There's a prostitute with him. Nice. Of course. That I listen because you know I knew I, I knew everybody right. at that time. I had been there for four years, so I knew who that was. Um, and oh. just just from like going to meetings and stuff like that. Like I just you know people. Right. And uh, I knew the other dude. You know, heroin addict. And right. I was like, yo, what the hell? It's going on there. Like, I don't know. We just did this. And, I, you know, I had to call the ambulance, but I can't be here. Can we leave? And I was just right. like, he had the owner's car. I was like, why is, where's, where's this owner at? You know, my boss. I'm like, where yeah. the fuck is he? he? Wasn't there, but the dude had his car. And I ended up just rolling up on him. They told me where he was. I was like, you need to tell me where this owner is right now. Like, why do you have his car? And they told me. And I rolled up on him. It was like 3 a.m., and he was geeked out in the corner of the bar, and he saw me walk in, and he was like, like, I didn't, wasn't going to see him. Right. You know, he's like, maybe if I don't look at him, he won't see me. Don't move. <laughs> and I was like, yo, dude, your boy is, like, overdosed in the shop. I told you not to hire this dude. Like, and that was it. I was like, I, you know, I need out. I got to get out of here. You know, yeah. classic tattoo apprenticeship <laughs> story. Right. The huge. Yeah. Which is, uh, especially, like, listening to the 
episodes you already did, it's like very common Yo, adventure for the older generation. Yeah. Not like now where you get taken in. We're losing that. Yeah. No. It's not a thing anymore. That yeah. was, this was a biker shop, bro. Like it's not as accepted yeah, as but all like had most, Harleys. Everybody rode. There was like most motor, shops were like motorcycle that stuff involved. in 2010. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see. So I started tattooing 2008. And I, li- you know, the funny part is like, I was talking about, about this with you before, how like me and Brianne go on the internet and like fight scratchers and they're like <laughs> self Yeah, I do want to talk about do, it. I do want to get on that subject. But like, the funny part is like, I'll do that. And I got into an argument with a, uh, who, uh, that, oh, that one apprentice we had. But uh, they're like, oh, but your apprenticeship. I was like, yeah, technically my apprenticeship was three months. And then, right. because by the time like I was able to like hold machines steady enough, he was like, all right, you're good. You're starting work now? And I was like, oh, all right. Like, I started apprenticing in January by right. April. Can you make me money yet? Yeah. And then yeah. he was like, oh, you can make me money. So, like, yeah, April that's 5th. That's all I care about. Yeah. Back and then, then that was it. Really cared about. You're good to go. And then, like yeah. you said, you were just trying to, like, get around. And then other people would show up. Because there was always, like, the turnover rate was pretty high in that shop. Because not the best conditions. So, like, the people would just come in. I'd be like, someone that did color. I'm like, oh, hey, hey, how do you do color? Like, you would just... Like here, you could be like, "Oh, I use an AI generated image to create a <laughs> brand new, uh, you know, reference that no one's ever seen before." And I'm yeah, like I did surrounded it this by morning the best at my business. mom's house. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas, like, I saw a guy that did a color blend. I'm like, "How did you do that?" Yeah, yeah. That and he's like, crazy. "Dark color, medium color, light color." I was like, well, like "Let me write this <laughs> down." <laughs> yeah. What Hold ink on. did you use? I need to know exactly what. Yeah. Ink. Could What's you mom? fax that to <laughs> it was me? All like mom's ink back then, right? Uh, mom's ink, star bright. Yeah. Oh. Oh, Fusion just started like before I left Brooklyn. So like I was like started buying that and like oh brand new color. And then I was like the color guy and stuff. Yo, but it's like back then, and I mean correct me if this wasn't for you guys, but you kind of like fuck your life up and you get in this situation where you don't have many choices. (laughs) However, tattooing is still one of those choices. Most of the other ones are gone. So you choose that, you're kind of at like the bottom. Your life sucks. You this is your last chance. You have to figure it out. So you have to work for drug addicts. You have to chill with prostitutes. Like, whatever. Like, bikers. It That's was your like, only way it's in. It's like a normal thing. It was your yeah. only way in. Like, I went to 30-something shops right. in two days. Like, just one in. Yeah. Hey, this is my portfolio. And I was out of art school. I dropped out. But, like, I had a professional portfolio. I was doing side work as an illustrator. Right. I did a couple articles. did a couple of book covers. I never made it. And then, like, <laughs> so, like, I had, like, a real portfolio. Like, right. I went to school for this. <laughs> and they were just like, nope, nope, no, no, no. So the place, the place that... Which was, I mean, it was nice because of walking distance from my yeah. apartment I just got. But the place that took me in, uh, Crazy Monkey, which was called at the time, it was like, like I showed up and then there, I was in the hood, you know, right. and I was on Bushwick. I was like, you know, in the middle of Brooklyn. And it was like, they didn't even believe it was my portfolio because that's how like horrible the scene was. Like, you know, gotcha. how ghetto yeah. it was. Like, I showed my portfolio and he was like, he went and told someone in the back, like, yo, this dude stole some dude's, like, artwork, and he's, like, showing it to me. <laughs> so he put me to a test, so he's like, all right, I'll tell you what, draw me, which ended up being his appointment that week. So <laughs> <laughs> draw me so, scorpion. Yeah, he's like, oh, what do I got coming up this week? Yo, draw me a lion on a throne surrounded by, like, his, like, kills or conquers or whatever, and I was like, all right, cool, and I started taking paper, and he's like, well, not now, and I was like, oh, I can go home and draw this? Because I thought you wanted me to write yeah. the spot, so I was just like, all right, cool, and then I think, like, Two days later, I like drew this whole thing for, up for him, and like it was on Illustrator board. It was ready yeah. for print too, and I was like, "It's framed. Like, it's hanging in our." Shop. It is framed. Yeah, customers yeah. talk about it still. Like, <laughs> yeah. it's a, they'll be like, "Yo, that's so sick!" Like, Actually, I'll be tattooing somebody, and they'll be like, "Like the dude, <laughs> the dad will be there and he'll be like, oh, I want that line.'" It's a very. Bro, I feel like that, that line is me. Yeah. It's a really like street. It image, is, yeah. yeah. Which is funny because the one hanging in the shop is not the original. The original has so many coffee and like cigarette burns on it. That it's like I like photocopied it and cleaned it up, so the one is actually a fake in the shop. But, but yeah, you just got in, dude. You just got in where you could, and you get in, and like this guy, this guy, this uh, person of uh, connections that are maybe questionable in a questionable place in the city where we're all smoking cigarettes and like like my setup was literally just two paper towels and pieces of tape, right. but like. But that was the guy that gave me my in. And then that was it. You're like, I'm in. And you're like, this is what I got to do. Because like you're saying, like, this is my option. And I was like, at the time, people looked at me like they look at you. where they're like, wow, you had it great. Like, you didn't even have to get out of rehab to become a tattoo artist. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, but it, like, built this mentality, right? That, and, like, I'm, I don't know, I'm back and forth. Because you see, like, I, everyone that apprenticed and learned, like, at the time I learned, like, they had this crazy like motivation and work ethic because it was like 
have those characteristics or kill yourself. Yeah, you know what I mean? Or less. give up completely. Like you're at the, the end of the road. I And now the apprentices come in with all kinds of options. <laughs> yeah. And lack Ooh. of motivation. I could be a realism artist or a, tr- a fine line. Yeah, or yeah, like, like I could go to college yeah. or <laughs> become an accountant. I mean, I think the like the day... Which like, is not like I have to make this work. Oh, you have to make it work. That was my last. Yeah. It wasn't like as desperate. And I have to make money and I have, you know, the demon shop owner whipping me every day to make him dollars. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. We could talk about that, too. I could take everything, dude. Yeah. You could not turn nothing down. You didn't if turn anything down. closed at away. 9 o'clock and somebody came in at 859 and they wanted that $300 Cherry Creek flash piece. <laughs> right. Guess what, dude? You're doing it. You're doing, you're doing it for midnight. midnight. And you're going to be there my shop, all night. My shop was 12 all to 12. Wise. So it was that same rule up to midnight. So like 11.55, if that three-hour tattoo came in, oh, you were doing it. Right. Kitchen closes at midnight. Yeah. But you, was, you, if you, you order stay. your food before that, you, you get can to stay hang longer. Out. You get to hang out. <laughs> Which is actually how me and my girl ended up moving in together. Because like, <laughs> I was like, I was like, well, you might as well move in because this is the only way you're ever going to see me. Because right. I was there till 3 a.m. Right. every day, you know? Right. Yeah. Or worst case, I would hang out and get tattooed. So like, that's how I got my one in my leg when the guy's nodding out and tattooing. <laughs> <laughs> I had food poisoning, but I was just so excited to get tattooed. But that's what it was. Like when I made the decision to start, you know, because like I said, I went to art college, I went to FIT in the city, and then then they wanted money, so I stopped going. And yeah. then uh, <laughs> I was like, I'm not paying, I'm not going into debt for an art degree. So I was like, and then I did that. Then I had a few jobs. Like I said, I was a struggling mm-hmm. illustrator, didn't pay the bills. Uh, Ended up doing warehouse jobs, you know, and then I was just bouncing around. And then at one point I went up to live with my parents for like a little bit because my mom was getting surgery and my dad needed help at work or whatever. So like I would literally just help my dad's like construction business, you know, yeah. just, I just didn't have anything. At that point, I remember I was just like sitting there and I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do with my life. Like, I don't know where to go. I was thinking about becoming like an art teacher. Like that was like my next move. Like maybe I'll apply oh, and go to college terrible. again. Yeah. And then, yeah. Cause you know, we need more art teachers. I want to take some serious. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I could be that guy, you know, cause I like teaching, which now it works out cause we can have apprentices and stuff. So I get to do both. But like, and then I was just like, you know what? And then like I Googled it and I looked up like, and they're like, you know, minimal three years apprenticeship and all this stuff. And then I was like, all right, this is the move. And then that was it. I just put all my chips in it. And I remember telling my dad who was like a really good artist and like, you know, all this stuff and like had like an architect degree and stuff. I was like, yeah, dad, I think I'm going to, I think I know what I'm going to do tattoo artist and he was like that's not good idea (laughs) he was like why would that be your backup disappointed and he's like that's your yeah he was he was like that's your backup plan like doing moms and hearts and i was like i was like this is the only plan this has to work like i can't like you know because i was like i just need to do something i need to make money i need to have something because i was just working to pay for rent and then rent was just so i had somewhere to live so i can go to work you know i was living in the city at the time so then yeah and there it was jumping into shops and then a guy gave me a chance <laughs> and it was not a great chance, but it was something. And then right. getting in where now you can follow like, Oh, I follow all these shops on TikTok or, you know, on Instagram. And you'd be like, Oh, you know, what'd be cool. I'll go working with that person. Or like, you know, or you could find an artist that has the kind of art you want to. Yeah. That's how it was for me. Yeah. Where we were just like, like, see my mentor's <laughs> full portfolio before even walking in the door. Yeah. What? No. So I was like saying like, for me, I've noticed the younger generation really lacks um, that drive to, like, make money and, like, almost that, like, survival instinct. But I've also seen some, like, pros. Yeah. You know, like, they're not physically dependent on any drugs, typically. Not really. You know? Um, they're usually, like, pretty nice to the customers. <laughs> <laughs> they show up to work. Yeah, they're yeah. good. They're good at, uh, like, social media and stuff like that. You know, they're they're up to date with, like, what's appropriate and what's not. Well, and I noticed this, too, with the last few people we trained, which is, like, even, like, newer tattoos, like, there's some level of, like, broken home. Like, yeah. you know, like, there's some trauma right. that, there's that brings that you to this job. You into that shop. Yeah. yeah, but it's, like, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, it's, like, that soft trauma. <laughs> it's, like, I have trauma and I'm, like, sad about it. Yeah, Where like us, my, it was like I had trauma and I'm mad about it. I like stumbled into an apprenticeship for piercing down here in South Florida because I went to rehab. <laughs> right, <laughs> like, right, right. This yeah. was like my third rehab in 2008. You know, been to so many. See, when I was starting in 2008, <laughs> you were still going that, to rehab. Like, yeah. You know, 
at that time I was building houses, which I was very good at. I right. still do it. I built a garage at my house right. by myself. Well, if you come like, from a broken home, you should know how to fix it, right? <laughs> <laughs> a lot of repairs. Dad, you yeah. put a hole in the wall again. <laughs> but I can't, like, Picture. I got, I went to rehab, dude, and I was like, I'm just going to stay down here. Yeah. I liked it. It was, the weather was There's great. There's bad rehabs down here. I was like, <laughs> I'm going to go to all of them. I'm just going to stay down here. You know, I told my mom. I live like, in Florida. I'm going to stay in Florida. Like, I'm going to find a halfway house. Yeah. I had money saved because I sold drugs. Yeah. That's like, I sold a lot of drugs. <laughs> that you had money saved. Uh, so when I left my house, you know, there was many, many drugs and a lot of money. That I right. left my mom. I was like, yo, like, you know, like, keep, you know, pay my bill, keep my phone on, shit like that. And like... I'm going to need that money to pay for a halfway house. Yeah. I'm staying down here. And I started, like, getting... I was already heavily tattooed. My boy owned a shop in Connecticut. Uh, and I would go there, like, every other day and just get tattooed. So I already looked like I was working in a tattoo shop. And I just went to this shop. I started getting pierced. And I just went all the time. People would, like, talk to me about piercings or tattoos, and I'd be like, oh, go, go up to this shop. And I will just keep showing up, bringing people, bringing people, keep talking to the owner, like, yo, I really want to learn. Like, I want to learn how to pierce. Like, my boy owned a shop. I would love. This is what I want to do. And I just showed up, and I brought people. And after, like, two months of doing that, the dude was like, yo, you're, like, really, you're, like, here a lot. You're bringing people here. And he's like, I'll take you on as an apprentice. I like worked busting my ass to get that shit. Yeah. You know, I had brought a lot of business there before. You know, I showed my face and I, I, yeah. I spent money there and I brought people there. And that was a real like that was a real apprenticeship. We, that shop was open from twelve to twelve, and I had to be there the whole time. But there was another apprentice there that had already been there, and I like you know my my drive was different. You know, you're if you're an addict, you know you got like a different drive. Like that, you're gonna yeah, you're gonna take in a day off. You're gonna right. get what you want. And that's, whatever that's me. Like, whatever I want, right. I do it. I get it. Right. That's, just, that's just how I am. And, uh, yeah, like, I surpassed that dude. Right. You know? After I was there for, like, three months, I was piercing people. This kid was still... They, they would make him, like, put a dress on and, like, go hand out flyers because he was just, like, a you know, lazier dude, you know? Yeah. So they took advantage of him, make him scrub the bathroom with a toothbrush. They told me that shit. I was like, I'm not, I'm not doing that. That's another thing that's, like, kind of dying off because it's, like, not appropriate. It's, like, hazing abuse. the... Yeah, yeah abuse. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, that used to be part of the apprenticeship. Like, human rights did is you, a thing. We didn't really dude, that, was long, that was a long time ago, though, man. That's, Compared to, like... 15 no. years but ago. It's the, it I, was, I, would, I got my fair share, though. What? What's, like, one that, like... No, you got, like, you jokingly messed with. What? <laughs> it was, like... It's very different. I had to sing you on couldn't. Friday the 13th. Stop, bro. Not <laughs> only did we pay for all your drinks that we forced you to have, <laughs> but yeah. you yeah. have a beautiful voice, dude. <laughs> <laughs> well, perfect example. Uh, there was before, it really hasn't been too... Because you, you got me a pair of sneakers for doing that. What? You got me a pair of sneakers yeah, I paid for doing you, that. you yeah. ungrateful piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've seen someone apprentice for two years and got nothing out of it. Right. You know, just abused and used for labor for two years and then buy. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, it's, I've seen that. You know what you joking anymore? around was with my second apprenticeship? You just got hit. <laughs> and then and then there was only Dad jokes. There was only one person <laughs> laughing, and I'll give you a hint. It wasn't me. The one who hit you. <laughs> Dad, a good one. Dad used to tell that joke. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard this one before. <laughs> well, it's very jokes. different, man. The apprenticing now, like, I feel like you're just spoiled. Yeah, you're spoiled. But you're, is that you have such a good well spoiled in life, comparison, right? Like, like, but is that just us being old like, guys? Yeah, like, like <laughs> is that just us, like, like World War II people yeah. looking at like people that grew up in the '80s, being like, you don't got nothing. I have PTSD and like heart disease, and then you're like, and then you're like, I have like. Like Iraq, I don't know, 9-11. And then you're just like, <laughs> like, is it just always, isn't that always the thing where the older generation just thinks the younger generation has it soft? Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I mean, I agree, they do have it soft right. compared yeah. to like us. Like, right. I thought my apprenticeship was soft, you know what I mean? Because I wasn't <laughs> in a rehab, you know what I mean? Right. So I was like, like, I was like, all right, I just got to deal with this. I just got to clean shit and stuff. Like, I didn't really get hazed, but it was just like the amount of shit you had to deal with was yeah. just like crazy. So it was like, so like, even when I talk to my therapist about it, I'll say like, the way I was raised, which is like... A, the way we always refer to like apprenticeships, like, well, I was raised like this. We worked right. hard and there was that level of desperation. So like, right. We didn't get divorces. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So that's what I mean. It's like, I'm sure a certain level of it is like us just being like, I had to go through shit. Why don't you have to go through shit? Right. And then they're like, well, I had to go through shit. I had to show up six days a week. Right. And you're like, <laughs> <laughs> right. You're like, all right. I had right. to sing. 
I don't want to 30 people. <laughs> I don't want to take that walk and it's not my style. Yeah. And you're like this. <laughs> Dude, that's honestly my only problem with my shop is like, I love everyone there and like, I'll die for them. But it's just like, I'm just like, when they go like this, I don't want to do this. And you have to be like, all right, I guess you have autonomy. Yeah. That's fine. But I guess I I'll like, do it because I can do it. Oh, anything. I'll do it. Right. Yeah, no, but that's day. annoying, bro. Anything, bro. Like, it, it's like, how do you just, not know how to do anything? That's how I grew up in this shit. Just do whatever. Right. Like, literally, the only thing I would ever turn away were full money. body Japanese suits. I want that money. Right. <laughs> like, I don't really know enough about that. Right. Like, you know, like, I can't. You know, especially because I didn't have a stencil machine back then. But it was like, <laughs> <laughs> like markers, here we go. Go live, you know. Yeah. But it was like, yeah, now it's just like you can be picky and choosy and stuff. Well, there's also so much more of it, too. Like, you have to be niche now. Like, yeah. like you know, because the way we trained, like, the way I trained, like, our apprentices is like, I taught them on coils. Like, yeah. I was like, I don't even want to see a rotary yeah. in your hand. We're very specific about that. And it's like, you know, like, we wouldn't have giving him a rotary right away you know it's just like yeah. different like you know conditions but it's like because i was taught you do everything you're right. gonna have to be able to do anything so it's like lines color packing yeah. whip shading tubes this is how it works and now they're just like after a year or two they're starting to like oh maybe i'll go buy a bishop or whatever and it's like right. you know now they're kind of exploring all this stuff but i was like i just had to be able to handle anything to walk through the door yeah. and i had to be quick about it because there was four other people waiting and we the shop i started into was on rotation and there would be <clears> six of us so if there wasn't seven tattoos, I wasn't tattooing twice that day, yeah. you know, but what I could do is be faster than everybody else. So I can get back out there and get the next person in line, you know, which got me a lot faster. Yeah. You know? So it's like, hundred percent. Yeah. So it's 100%. like people just, uh, Dude, we have our now. apprentices like finishing their apprenticeship and then they're just booked out. Yeah. Like how, <laughs> Yo, how did you just apprentice and you're booked out like three months? I need to tell you about Allegory's new Ultra Black. This stuff is dark, maybe even darker than my childhood. It is amazing for lining, shading, and even blackouts. And I know a thing or two about blacking out. You got to check this stuff out on allegoryinc.com. Use discount code unemployable for 20% off. Again, go to allegoryinc.com, check out their new Ultra Black, and use discount code unemployable for 20% off. <laughs> yeah, money's money. But you got to get out and you got to talk to people. People see your tattoos and that's it. You, that you start be, a conversation. You have outside. to have tattoos, or you just waited. You sat in that shop. You weren't allowed to leave in twelve yeah, to twelve, dude. and you just hope people came through the door. That's it. And you're like, please, now, please, now please. we're you know we have a luckily our shop like flourished into something great, and the emails just come in, bro. They don't stop. Well, so that's like, what it is too. Now the name it just gets passed along yeah. to the apprentices because all you know the older artists and you guys stay did it right. pretty booked out so it's like apprentices finish and they have appointments right well and you guys did Crazy. it did it right too and like i don't because i don't want to brush over that either like you brought really quality work to like an area that didn't essentially have it right basically oh yeah yeah, definitely. yeah. and we're able to maintain that and like not necessarily you know because some people might like do that and they're like oh we're so ahead of everyone else, maybe we'll not, we don't have to try as hard. And it seems like you guys just keep trying, you know, harder, 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 raising the, the, the workers. Yeah. And it's like, no one's going to be able to catch up. We have standards, you know what I mean? Like yeah. we, I had a vision, you know what I mean? Dan talked about it and it was like, I want to have the best. Like, I want to be the best. We're doing this, like, we're putting everything in it, you know, whoever Quality. we hire is yeah. like, you know, there's, there's high standards. Right. And, you know, we, even when we took on, we hired Ty first, right? Yeah. Like, we had another dude guest spotting with us. It was just me and Dan. And, you know, Ty showed up, and I knew his girlfriend from, she was from that area. So, you know, he wanted a job, and we were like, oh, I don't know, you know, we'll yeah, we'll, we'll hit you back or whatever. Because we, you know, we had Stan, we were like, listen, this, we don't want anything leaving here. Or I don't want anybody here that I have to go and look at the tattoo right, yeah, before right. they leave. Very worried about so, quality control. Like that's it. We want to make sure we're the best. No problems. Nothing like that. And it was actually the guest artist that was like, "Yo, that kid." Like, cause he had, he just had drive. He had heart. I re I love Ty, man. He was. Yeah, I, like uh, I really Ty liked too. him. Who was the guest artist? Tony. Oh, Tony. Man. Um, Tony uh, from yeah. Ohio. Yeah, that's right. But uh, he was like, "You guys should hire that kid." Like, he's going to bust his ass. Because he was like, yo, I'll do anything. I'll come in. Like, and he did. 
and he did whatever. Remember, he came in, he was like cleaning and shit the first day. Yeah, he's like, I'll he do was, whatever. And yeah. and you know what, man, he came from like a hood shop, and he talked like wild. He would talk about wild ass shit, and we'd <laughs> like be like, Jesus. When when yeah. the client would leave, we would be like, bro, you can't talk about that. Like, Better pull aside a few times. This ain't like the hood Give me an shop example. in Poughkeepsie. You know, you got to learn how to talk like this. Great and, example of what he was talking about. Yeah. yeah. Oh God. Dude, he would start going on about fifth dimensional light yeah, beams. Dude, like, and <laughs> I told him like, like, like seventeen like, hits of acid. They got a dance for three see. days, and <laughs> right. they yeah. found me sleeping in the church. Yeah. And then they locked me in the psych ward. He would start getting into religious talk. And anyway, then, like, I just finished your mom's name, and then it, it, and then it got into like you know how Jesus and how right. religious he was, and but like know. weird, not like straightforward religion. Yeah, I know. and we would pull him to the side and be like, "Yo, you can't bring that yeah. up. You know, you got to calm down with that shit." I do like Ty a lot. I still no, talk, I personally I still like Ty, Ty, even though yeah, he doesn't work there anymore. Yeah, but like he would be like, "They just bring it up." I'm like, "They're not bringing up fifth dimensional light beings, yeah. man. <laughs> <laughs> you are bringing it up, and they're just not arguing with you because you're tattooing them. You know, right. like, like he spells something on okay. them. They're like, Jesus Christ. He's like, speaking of Jesus Prompt. Christ, yeah. Yeah. fifth they, dimension. Dude, they brought it up. <laughs> Well, when we opened the shop, too, and this is, like, what you were saying, like, you you were just saying, like, you didn't open a shop to, like, distance yourself, you know, like, it was about, like, quality and bringing something to the area, but that's also why it was, you know, and then we we're talking about this, like, tattooing anything that walks through the door. When we started, me and him did the walk-ins. Right. You know, I you did everything. I lost a lot of my clientele from moving back and forth from the shop I was in before, and then the time it took for the shop to be built, we were kind of, like, homeless. We were tattooing yeah. out of, like, a... Trap house. Called that it was the trap house. Yeah, yeah, that was invite only. <laughs> yeah. You know, I had to send him a picture of the front door. Be like, I know this is sketchy Yo, and a big no, red arrow. No phone service or nothing in it, bro. We <laughs> yeah. literally had like a table. It was just a room, like a fold up table and a bathroom. against the wall, and our two chairs yeah. and, and just and boxes of supplies. A back room just... that I did piercings in, and we were <laughs> yeah. there for a few months. We Why? were there long enough that people would show up and they'd be like, "Yo, is this the tattoo shop?" And we're like, <laughs> "Not gonna." Nah, this ain't a tattoo shop, bro. Right. Like, a couple seconds. Trap sessions. house. We're building a tattoo right, shop. Right. I gained some good clients from that era too. They're like, yeah. "I remember when you were in the trap." Yeah, that yeah. was fun. That's but then fun. when we and opened like, the shop. Stop coming here. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to shed Dude. you years ago. Even like the last, I remember the last day because you were like there with the fire inspection yeah. and they're like, where's your like fire signature? You're like, hold on. You like ran to Home Depot, came back, drilled it on the wall or whatever. And then I was like tattooing and I was just like, you're like, call me and you're like, I'm like, did we pass? Can we open up? And you're just like, what do you think they said? I'm like, stop fucking with me, Justin. Like, tell me what the fuck happened. And he's like, yeah, we got it. I was like, nice. And I looked at my client. I'm like, you're the last person I'm ever tattooing in this trap house. Yeah. And I think within like, I finished the tattoo and then we had a U-Haul. Yeah. Like that day we were yeah. in. Yeah. And that was it, bro. We, but it was just know. me and you in the beginning. Yeah. And that's why it was that's anything all, that walked that's, through the door. That's all we wanted. We, we were like, yo, whatever happens. But like, even if it was just us, we didn't care. Yeah. Because like the shop wasn't as big as it yeah, is yeah, now. Yeah. So yeah. we were like. Even if it's just us, like, what we're paying for the rent at that time was, like, we were paying more to be, you know, he was paying more and renting a I chair. Had a booth rent, yeah, which was more than the entire More than our entire rent. rent. Yeah. Wow. And I was like, you know, Dude. I'm from this area, so I'm not worried because people are just going to come because I'm yeah. here now. And, dude, we were, like, like, instantly people there. You know what I mean? Like We were, were painting. We're open. We were painting yeah. the walls, yep. and people are walking in like, because the landlord right. put a big, like, tattoo shop coming soon banner or whatever, which is one of the reasons why I had to tell my boss I was quitting because I was like, oh, Shane's going to see that. And then, because uh, <laughs> like, he lives right next to that. And yeah. then, like, people are like, so uh, I still have that client, that old dude. <laughs> like, oh, capiche? capiche. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, I'm trying to get a portrait. Capiche? And, like, we're capiche. painting, like, yeah, okay, when we capiche. open, dude. Yeah. Like, yeah. We literally yeah, know there's nothing in here. Capiche. Yeah, he showed up, like, three times dude, before we opened. He still shows up. Wants me to do yeah. a big Elvis back piece on yeah. But it's like. But it was just that. And then we used to always joke. We joke like trap house to the penthouse. Like we started at the bottom. Me and him did it. And this is one of the reasons why I think being all well-rounded artists helps. Because if you need to go out on your own, you need to like be able to just take care of anything and get right. anything. I mean, but it shows, man. Like it, if you're in upstate New York, like no man's land tattoo, that's where to go. Like even being from North Jersey, like uh, my people will drive to you guys. There's right. only like one other like good shop or like a really good rep. That's I don't, like I, don't, I disagree. <laughs> <laughs> they're far enough away where it's not a thing yeah, but yeah. yeah they're on the other side of the river no but it's yeah. sick man and that is how like you you build clients and it and it's like funny because it's i mean well, it's not funny it's just cool man like you guys start you start these young guys you know you tr you know train them properly and then you've already built this shop that provides for the artist 
in so many ways. Not only like yeah. the knowledge, but the clients, man. And it's like this is how you treat them, whatever, whatever. And I think that's cool because so many shops like we've worked at, we've worked at like the owners provided nothing. Yeah. And like you walk into your shop and you can tell like you reinvested, you spent money on the place and it looks super nice. And that is the first impression for me always walking into a shop. Yeah. Like, did these guys or girls put money back into the fucking shop? And we did. We dumped. Yeah. We dude. did that. And you We're still, still are. Doing it. You still yeah. are. Yeah. Do, bro. Yeah. We still just never ending. Bro, I love not that as good shit, as bro. It's like we just dump it right back. Every yeah. time we think we can't fit something else on the <laughs> yeah. wall, bro, you yeah. know. Yeah. We still buy or even art. like we little shit. Like, like when you cool got that shit, retro so. fridge, I'm like, damn, we gotta get a retro oh, that's fridge so. for the shop. That's, that fridge is awesome. You know, yeah, or like, fridge. oh, we're putting these figurines in, or oh, we're getting this like cool little well, like, door th that swings on. Oh, open. Yeah, so yeah that right. was a cool door too. Uh, it's, even though it's been broken like four times, it's still yeah. cool. Uh, even well, though even, he didn't cut it the right size. Oh, the guy fucked it up. The guy that made it. Yeah. Cut it in order for it to fit. So. Well, even like the shop was smaller, you know, and then when we, there was a good moment there before the shutdown where like, you know, or like, you know, a year or two in where like we were doing well and we're like, cool, we can add more because the space next to us wasn't used yet because it was yeah. all built out. And then we're like, can we add like another six, whatever, what did we add? Like 600 square feet? Or something? Yeah, we almost doubled the size. We're like, I think we're like, um, we're like 16, 1700 feet now or something. Yeah. 16 to 1800 square feet. I don't remember. But then we added like a whole new section and an office. That was a good day because yeah. before we didn't have an office, right? So like we'd all there's like a corner we would go eat in and we'd we just a put curtain. a sheet up, we had like so. a curtain, we'd close because <laughs> that's where the printer was and shit. We'd all just because everybody could see us. We'd yeah. just be like trying to eat real quick. It was literally yeah. the size of this table, like that yeah. corner. It was like, yeah, yeah. and then like we would do Friday thirteenth events and there'd be like 70, 80 people like waiting and we're all sitting there behind. That's why we put the curtain up because yeah. we'd be trying to eat pizza and they're yeah. looking at us like. Staring at you, you got bro. pizza like, over there. Yeah. I've been waiting six hours. Yeah. Guys eating pizza, and I was just like, <laughs> "These people are savages, like, bro. They don't, they don't <laughs> care if you're starving. Fuck no, they, they just want don't. their fucking tattoo. Right at thirteenth, right. people are definitely a different like. What do you breed. mean? I see them. They're right there. <laughs> <laughs> they could be doing this my sleeve right now. These <laughs> 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 Damn, that's that's a subject in Yo, itself. It's, it's the Friday Thirteenth people. Oh my god, bro. That, that's a whole different type of people. Animals, yeah. they're just bro. Like oof. we're open. No, we throw in a van, it gets crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. yeah. That's like that's like um, we're known for that because the line it ends up around the entire building into the parking lot. We had to start making like taking measures to not like let people hurt themselves out there. Because remember that yeah. one event, it was like sunny it out, sunburn, dude. Bro. Everybody was coming in with sunburn <laughs> on one side of them for standing in yeah, line. They're like I can't get tattooed where I wanted to anymore. <laughs> <laughs> they're like it was gonna. Guess be, it's going on your fucking leg, dude. Yeah. <laughs> and all of them on one side, so yeah. we had to start coming out because they'd be yeah. lining up eight. We don't even waters dude. out and stuff. But now we did. A, we have a system to where like <laughs> we whatever the line is, you know, Kelsey goes out there. She takes everybody's name and number, and we know how many clients we could do right in on that set day you're like, all yo, the just, time. Just, we know like uh, we gotcha, could each gotcha. do roughly this yeah. many we could do 120 so, today yeah we're cutting it off because we want to get usually home the midnight. line is like it's we can't even at I've 12 o'clock when we open yeah. it's cut off so people come and call all day and they're like can i get on we already have 100 and some people please i've been saving up it's all crazy. year for this crazy, <laughs> i got all 39 dollars yeah i've been go. saving up three cents a day waiting for you guys to start my sleeve yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, those are the people. That's like, a lot of them. Another one, another yep. one, another one. A lot of little pieces. The patchwork of people. Just working on Yeah, I love it. I was like, how many <laughs> Friday the 13th have you done? It's just like, yeah, dude. When they try to be like, can you take the 13 out so they can kind of like hide that it's a Friday the 13th <laughs> tattoo? Like, I just like little tattoos. You're like, no, you're getting the 13. Yeah, I mean, it's patchwork. Yeah. That's what they call it now, dude. Patchwork. I don't know. But there's always new names for shit, dude. I call it the bathroom stall. Oh. The bathroom yeah. stall? Yeah. It's, pat it's patchwork? Yeah. No, it's just little tattoos. Bro, it's like a bathroom stall. Like somebody That's fucking scribbled on economy yeah. class tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You guys below economy. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, and those people are always the same, like, I just wanted to get something today. I saw there was an event, so I felt like standing in line for seven hours. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I don't even like tattoos. Yeah. You know, for $120, you can come any other day, yeah. and you don't have to stay in the sun for <laughs> yeah, like seven And get a special treat. Yeah. I know. <laughs> come in, I'm ready for you. Sit in line, bro. They'd literally be there for like five, six hours. Yeah. For a 39 That's why we started tattoo. doing the list because they get bad. It'd be seven, eight hours. They'd be waiting. It's yeah. crazy. It's like your whole day was worth that. I think two I mean, Friday whatever. the 13th ago. Uh, I'm not going to shit on it, but <laughs> yeah. it's, that's not worth it to me. I ain't no. sitting nowhere to save, literally to save 80 bucks. Dude, no. Yo, that's that's your whole I'm day, bro. When we do Friday the 13th, I put up a privacy screen. Not because I need privacy because of the 
tattoo just because I, I don't want to be seen because I need privacy. <laughs> My client doesn't. And then it's like 9, 10 o'clock at night. I must have been in a good mood that day because I like grabbed one of the people waiting and I'm like, you want a castle? <laughs> you know, and I just whipped out like a little castle. But then it's like 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock. People are like sitting on the curb and shit. And I'm like, yo, I'm just curious. I don't care if I fuck up a client. It's my shop. I walk over. I'm like, yo, how long have you guys been waiting? They're like, four hours. I'm like, why? <laughs> you know? And they're like, oh, you know, just like something to do or whatever. I'm like, there's so many other things to do. But that's what I'm saying. Like, like what are you getting? They're like. It's like broken skateboard with 13 on it. <laughs> I'm like, why, dude? Well, and then, too, one of the ways we tried to, like, separate ourselves from the other shops in the area was, like, we made sure that we overdid the quality on those events. So we're not doing five-minute bangers on those days. We're yeah. doing, yeah, up, bro. We're doing $150 yeah. no, tattoos, sure. yeah. which also murders us. But, you know, especially now, and I, too, even though they complain, they love doing it because everybody shop don't draws. don't make money. That no, day. no, yeah. we lose money on those events. No. Because the supplies cost more, you know what I'm saying? Like, we yeah. use all really high-end shit. Well, that's yeah. how we, we knew COVID was happening. Because <laughs> March 13th of, what was it, 2020, right? COVID happened? The shutdown? Yeah. Uh, we were getting ready for that Friday 13th, and we couldn't get supplies. Um, and we started trying to do orders, and then because China was shutting down first. Right. And we're like, wow, we can't get gloves. We can't get this. We can't get that. And then we're like, yo, Friday 13th is like in a few days. And then we're like, hmm, because it was hard to get supplies, we're like, you know what, we, call, we called it off. And Ooh. then, what, the 17th, we were shut down. So it was like, it was like that. Yeah, but I just remember because yeah. that Friday the 13th we was did the last up, thing. Because, um, oh, yeah, we stocked I had hard. like somebody that owned a tattoo supply. We hoarded gloves. Um, on my Facebook. Yeah. And he was like, yo, all my friends, like, I'm just letting you artists know, stock up on whatever you can. So we filled our storage unit with cases of gloves, bro. Bro, it we had, spawned. We had, we had like 10 cases of gloves yeah, in there, dude. we definitely. We were stocked. Dude, I don't know they about could. you guys, but down here, these like glove salesmen Demon spawn, people. emerged, <laughs> and started <laughs> like sick. selling gloves to everyone. Yeah. And I fucking hate them. <laughs> like they go all here the door and I'm people. like, yo, like three I'm, times a day. I'm like, never call here again. <laughs> I was like, and they're like, well, what do you pay now? And I was like, I yo, even if you come for free, I won't take them. <laughs> and I hate you. And I pray every night that you and your family have a terrible life. <laughs> Dude, because they call here so much, bro. Is that bad? And, bro, and they're like these like sociopath, like sales demons. They don't yeah. care what you say. It, you know, and they're like, well, what are you paying? I bet I can beat it. And then they're like, yeah, I'm just sorry. Like, you want to spend so much extra money on gloves. Like, they get, like, shitty with it. Yeah. yeah, I'm just trying to help you out. It's like, like you're going to be off. like, you know what? You're right. I'm sorry. Bro, like, yeah. a few times I'm like, Seth, tell them we want enough gloves for them to come deliver it in person. So I could just beat the shit. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, I'll just put sandwich bags on my hands if that yeah. was my choice. Right. My alternative choice to using you. But yeah, dude. And it's like, you know, a lot of... Thankfully, like, a lot yeah, of these companies, like, just give us gloves. So, like, and he thought I was, like, lying. I'm like, yo, we have sponsors. We just get gloves. And he's like, yeah, right, bro. Come on. You don't have to play hardball with me. What are you paying? Well, how many shops do you have in the area? Like, a lot. A lot? Yeah, there's a lot, right? We passed yeah. a few just last night yeah. this morning. Yeah. yeah. Well, that was even, like, we were in, I was down in Texas recently. Uh, my friends were getting tattooed down there. And I remember we were just sitting in the hotel, and I was like, I wonder how many shops are around here. So I just Google map my location, and I put a 10-mile radius on it. And I was like, it's like 27. Yeah. I was like, oh. So yeah, that guy is getting 27 here. shops to be like, fine. And then you're like the one good shop. It's like, stop fucking calling me. Bro, and they're <laughs> trash bag yeah. gloves, dude. Yeah. yeah. We like had some, like, never we some gloves. Quality. There was somebody that came in. And every, they just fell apart. Everybody hated them. Bro, I like put, put it on, on and the whole rip, thing the rips. Pops through the, yeah, the, bro. The, the they already have rips. holes in them. It's yeah. like, yo, I, I told Kelsey, like, yo, don't ever buy these fucking gloves again. Right, bro. They suck. Every time. Every other glove would break. Bro, I, I want to say his name, but I'm not going to. <laughs> bro, there was a, we have a specific Patreon, guy that yeah, yeah, calls us. I fucking hate him, dude. There has been a lot of that in this conversation of like, oh, I just want to call this person out by name. <laughs> Maybe I will. Maybe I'll just go off. But I'm, I'm not trying to be oh, professional. I don't know like he watches that, our though. shit, though. No, no. Yeah. Whatever. He's a better man. Yo, let's talk about... Yo, you... Miss... If you... Kn you know who you are, glove guy, that <laughs> yeah. calls my shop. Yeah. 
and tries stop to make it. jokes about pricing and thanks for listening, but stop it. Like from the bottom of my heart, I wish nothing but like <laughs> terrible things <laughs> for you and everyone you care about. Oh my God, um, fucking glove. Let's guy. talk about uh, <laughs> yeah, pick yeah, a subject, John. Uh, the scratcher things that you were telling me about. Ooh, the scratchers, the misinformers. Uh, yeah, me and my uh, our artist and good friend of mine, uh, Brand Brand Tattoos, is like. We just love talking shit with scratchers. But it's not even... Okay, let me back step. It's not the fact that people are out there scratching. Well, is, what is a scratcher? All right. Oh, yeah. A scratcher is what well, basically just our way of shit talking an artist who is not very good or they tattoo out of their kitchen or they're not in a professional setting and or probably didn't have an apprenticeship. So it's like... It's a... Um, what do you call that? Like, My old boss. It's usually like scratcher. someone that My, yeah. sucks at art... That's not They're clean. scratching people, not right. art on like, them. Yeah. Like little cats. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's a derogatory term used for tattoo artists. You know, right. like Their you tattoos know. look a specific way. Yeah, like it looks scratchy. It's not yeah. applied well because... You probably don't use gloves. Yeah. Probably don't use gloves. Those are the no videos. They're, so they're using yeah. like the right. powdered kitchen gloves. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So they think like, because they bought a, a kit eBay on machine. Amazon yeah. or eBay or some shit that they could just tattoo. Yeah. For some reason, they think they're good. So, basically... Yeah, that's a scratcher. Yeah, so me and Brian love doing this thing, especially on TikTok, where, again, there's just scratchers out there. They just exist, and you just keep them separate. They don't work at your shop. You don't associate with uh, them or whatever. But the thing that gets on my nerves and Brian's nerves, and this is the thing we like to do, is we sometimes we find people, especially this one guy on YouTube... Uh, Dave, I'll say his name. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> fucking Dave of uh, um, his he has a channel called Art Something. Uh, it's literally called Art Something, and he just tells people like what to do. He's like, "All right, this is the machine I use. This is how it's set up." And you're listening to it, and you're like, "This sounds like he knows what he's doing. Like he says it. Like he parrots like the confident. information. Like he, yeah, yeah, he's confident." But then it's the worst tattoo you've ever seen, and then right. he puts up the video. And with the part that gets me... Don't all, forget to subscribe. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, hit that. Date, art right? something. Yeah, yeah, art something. Dave, you suck, dude. Uh, <laughs> and, like, me and Brianne would just watch... He probably sells dude. gloves. Uh, he's, I think he's moving to Texas right now. So he's going to be down there. He's probably going to be like, oh, I got mentioned on John Nelson's podcast. And uh, <laughs> it's going to be a fan. But he's, like, this dude that he encourages... And this is the problem I have with it, we have, is, like, it's when people encourage people to not go through proper channels to become a tattoo artist. Like, yeah. I get it. It's hard to get into. I get it. It's hard to get an apprenticeship. And most places suck. And a Should lot of be. shops are yeah. hard to get into. And they don't want to talk to you. And they're assholes. And, or you get an apprenticeship and the hazing is too much. And you don't like being treated like shit. And right. I get it. And the industry is getting better well, as a whole. People think but, they don't have to work for something. But that's what that's it is. The problem. You have dude. to earn it. And I get it. Some people are like, well, why do I have to earn it? You know, or I mean, even. In Somebody like a, came in recently. They wanted an, a, an apprenticeship. And they were like, am I going to get paid? Oh, for a piercing like, apprenticeship, I was like, yeah. I was like, what the fuck do you mean you're going to get paid? <laughs> and then people no. are like, that why takes you, advantage of people. Why would I pay you to learn how to pierce? I'm teaching you uh, like a, a job, a career right. that you're going to make yeah, a lot of money. Yeah, do you get paid money, in dude. college? Like, but that's... You want me to pay yeah. you? That's literally the problem because the people that in those comments, because someone would be like, this is what I do, and then me and her, me and Brian will jump in and be like, like, this guy doesn't always talk about your tattoo in right. your kitchen. Stop telling people. Because you're encouraging people to do this. Because yeah. they're like, this is so inspirational. And then when we argue with they're like, oh, it's gatekeeping. That's a word you hear a lot. Like, like we're keeping people out. But it's like, no, it's just a hard job. And we don't want people coming in and just flooding the market, even though it happens regardless. But it's the people that encourage other people to do it that really gets on our nerves. And it's like, they're like telling people, yeah, you're doing good. But they're just encouraging bad use. Like, scratcher tattoos, like these self-taught people that don't want to work in a shop for whatever reason, all their tattoos look the same. Right. Like, they all have, Garbage. like, a certain amount of, like, complexity. It's like a disease. Dude, it's bad. They just don't know yeah. what they're doing. Yeah. And it's these people just, like, encouraging it, and then we just talk shit until we get banned, or <laughs> until right. we get our, like, we get blocked, usually. Uh, so you can go to sleep at night, knowing you helped the tattoo industry. Yeah. 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 I just want them to know I don't like them. I'm not trying to, <laughs> I, I'm not trying to, like, win an argument, or, like, you know, you know like, like convince anybody. I just want to make sure I'm noted in the comments, and be like, this dude sucks, don't do this. And right. it's like, because they encourage, because people will be like, well, it's really hard to get an apprenticeship, so why can't I go and buy a machine off Amazon and do it? And it's like, oh, you can, you're just going to suck. Right. You know, so don't. Well, because you're going to hurt people, and you might, like, it contaminate them or whatever, like, you, you make people sick, like, that's why. Yeah. yeah. And like, yeah, that and you give. it's on you forever, dude. Right. And then people in the like, comments will be like, but, like, you know, 
or they'll be like, well, I don't want to do an apprenticeship because I like I don't get paid to do that. Right. Like, like <laughs> whipping up. And then it's like, but it's like, yeah, but you don't you pay other people to go to college. Like you, especially now, because I had that sticker shock where someone recently told me how much they paid for college. I was like, what? And then yeah. just was like, yeah, 2002 was a long time ago, man. College prices have gone up since then. Yeah. And it's like, but they're like, because you they go to like non Ivy League, it could be like 60,000 a year. Yeah. yeah. And so it's like, like for our apprenticeships, we don't charge, but you work. And right. I expect you to be there six, seven days a week. Right. But it's not just because of like, well, that's how you're paying us. You're, yeah. you're going to work. And the reality is, like, in return, you're costing us money. Yeah, while in you're return, learning. You're, you're costing you're me time. Getting a career, yeah. Yeah. a right. very good career. Right. Like, put in that work, dude. But then, unlike your parents, I'm investing. In you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it's like, but it's like even like even if that's the sh- okay, even that aside. But it's like you're never gonna get good. Right. People in private studios don't get good. You guys, I just listened to the other podcast you guys yeah. were talking about that, where it's like you're in like an echo chamber, and there's no encouragement, and there's no rivalry, and it's like or nothing comparison. to push you forward. Right. What's that? Or comparison. Yeah. yeah. Right. Where like you do something and someone else goes to, even if it's not like as straightforward as like, how do you do that? The, just the pressure of the other person in there. Like, yeah. like when I come in and see this tattoo, yeah. I feel pressured to be a better artist. Right. You know what I mean? And that comes from being around artists. And right. when you're it's just in your kitchen, like I just got blocked by some guy on uh, TikTok. Um, I was talking shit, but then, you know, people were going back and forth. But then I was like, you know what? We won't even talk about the art. How about just the fact that you charge people $200 an hour yeah. for this? Right. You know, like you're charging people $200 an hour for a tattoo that took you four and a half hours to do. That could have been done by first year students, first year artists in my shop in an hour. Why are tattoos so expensive? <laughs> yeah, these exactly. kitchen magicians are raising the prices. Everyone yeah. thinks it's coming from the top. It's coming from the bottom. No, it is. It's so pressure. what Dan's saying is if you're in your kitchen, you're not going to get better until you hire more people in your kitchen. <laughs> yeah. Like there's another shop that we got into like a thing with like a, like near us like again no names till later but like uh, <laughs> dude there's like two shops that are just totally dude, you gotta write this <laughs> shit down <laughs> so, he, so he knows we gotta remember to bring it up on Patreon I got it oh mind. dude we'll, you'll get four hours of us just talking <laughs> shit instantly but like cause like you know and it's like oh why are tattoo artists like that it's like there's just you just get into these like feuds because like we are a big believer in like proper education, learning how to do it, being pressured correctly, learning a certain also, kind of steps. Just because you want a tattoo doesn't mean you should fucking tattoo, or you can, or that you that hurts so many should people have in the heart. this career. Right. You have to right. earn just because you, you think it's that. cool yeah. and you want to do it, it doesn't mean you deserve it. Right? I wanted to be a pro athlete. Guess what? It wasn't in the fucking car. Well, yeah. there's well, there's I want to join the Air Force. You have to but earn I, that. There is a shop that thinks. Anybody that wants a tattoo should learn how to tattoo. Oh, my God. That's so they have fucking 15 apprentices, dude. It's crazy. We got tat schools down here. There's one in the Brooklyn. There's a tat <laughs> school. Dude, I had some guy come in. He showed me. It was a friend of Connor's or something like that. He was, like, showing me, like, what he did. And then he paid, like, ten dollars or $12,000 for yeah. that school. And he was just, like. Look at my diploma. He, yeah, dude. He was, like. <laughs> and he was like diploma. <laughs> he's, like, showing me stuff. He's, like, do you have any advice? And then I said something about liners and shaders. He's, like, oh, yeah, what's the difference between those two? I'm, like. You paid ten thousand dollars for a tat school, and they didn't even explain to you the difference between like this kind of machine, and that kind of machine. That's always the first sticker shock of anything when people come in. They're like, because a lot of times we adopt people that were already started somewhere else, and they're like, "Yeah, I wasn't taught any of this. They gave me a machine, and told me to start." And you're just like, "Oh my god!" You Do know, they have so fraternities? Like, they have what? Fraternities? <laughs> tat the schools? <laughs> <laughs> At the it's tat like school. the blackout boys and the fucking color boys. Oh, the fine line girls. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All the Asian fine line girls. Yeah. That was when I went to get you my think the parties tattoo license. <laughs> Dude, no, uh, they're probably horrible. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's just like, there's just no respect for it. And I get it. You want to do whatever, but it's the encouraging of people to disrespect the industry that really just like burns me. And then like, you know, some brand says a lot too. It's like, this is, and this is, I think this is the part that really fucks with people when they go like this, like, why can't I? Like, and you're saying like, you don't deserve, not everyone deserves everything. You know what I mean? Like, because they think they're entitled. They're like, well, why can't I? It's another art style. And it's not another art style. It's not painting. No one gives a shit about your 500 shitty canvas paintings in your fucking house of the fucking landscape. You know what I mean? Like, you do 500 shitty tattoos. Those are 500 people walking around. That's a good point. Outside. You know what I mean? Like, you can practice all day on any other. You can go through 20 airbrush machines. You can, like, you can just do whatever. But tattooing is, like, it's kind of almost impossible to practice outside of people. Right. You know, like you can do the tattoo skin. Like we're joking about like the speed sticker. I was like, yeah, there's tattoo skins, but usually that's like tattoo skin. The fake skins is like the equivalent of putting your kid in the car in like a parking lot with two cones. And we're like, all right, 
drive through the cones right. and you're like like it's practice but that's not driving yeah. that's not you on a highway right. you know and that's the difference the more it just gets you comfortable with the machine yeah it just yeah. teaches you the moves yeah. you know it's like, like engraving dude yeah. yeah it's engraving and scan or like um but yeah it's like people just don't you know they don't respect that and they think you know it's a job and that's the other thing too they think it's a job they're like it's just a job i just want to get a job right this is a career this is a career yeah. this is a lifestyle, lifestyle yeah. this is a people yeah, this dude. is like this shit that changed my life, man. Tattooing changed my life. Like this is something you get into that has a history. You know, like it's a culture. It's like you are a different like tattoo people are like a people, like anything else. You know, it's like, you know, the people that came before you, who taught you, your mentor, how you know, even though we had shitty upbringings and how that worked, but we it was because we we're trying to get into something that already existed. Yeah. You know, and people back then didn't want people getting into it. And it was private back when like people took the labels off bottles because they didn't even want you to know what brand it was, you know? And now it's become a lot more accessible and stuff like that. But it's like, it's still, you know, it's still an industry that I think, and I think we all agree, this needs to be respected and treated with a certain amount of quality, you know, because there's just so many people out there that aren't doing that, you know, and it's important. And that's, I mean, it's not a job. It's not something to try. You need to like, like you said, last ditch effort. If it's either this or I'm going to be dead in a week. Dude, like what happened to like, Going, getting heavily tattooed, hanging out in shops, like doing all of being part of the tattoo world, like showing your part of it. Yeah, before being invited not just showing into up, it. being like showing interest. Like, in oh, that. I want a tattoo. It's like, where the fuck are your tattoos? Right. What sh- have you ever been here before? Have you been? Do you, right. do you know anybody here? Like, do you know anything about tattooing? Do you know? Can you name any like pioneers? Can you do any like no? You just think tattooing's cool. Yeah. Right. Nah, dude. Whereas I hung out. You I just got, I was, have a drug problem. I was in shops. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I was... Yeah. That shit attracted me, dude. Being in shops, hanging out, like, with tattoo artists, going out with them, like, just living that lifestyle, you know? That was a lifestyle. Well, That's I, what attracted me. I knew tattoo artists. Like, my good friend at the time was apprenticing. Like, I knew them. Her boyfriend was a tattoo artist. I was exposed to it way before I decided to get into it. So, like... It was already something I was, like, familiar with. I was hanging out in shops with them and, like, got my first few tattoos and stuff. So, it's like, yeah. Or even, like, Alex. You know, like, how Alex, like, got her apprenticeship. Like, she did the most straightforward way. She got tattooed by you. Got tattooed for years. Came to the shop. Yeah, she I was a regular. Her. She gave us money. She at asked for the apprenticeship. I was at years. Yeah. Many years ago, man. Then she came and asked me for an apprenticeship. I said no, like, because I had uh, Vic at the time. So, I didn't want to take on another one. And I was like... I, but I gave her, like, pointers on her portfolio. <clears throat> then a year later, when Vic was graduated, and then we put up an ad, like, you know what, let's get another apprentice. We can do this again. Boom, on the spot. Hey, what's up? You know what I mean? Like, she listened. She changed her portfolio. She waited a year. She waited for the opportunity. She worked for it. You know, she had another job, and she had to leave. She had a struggle. And a lot of times, too, when you're younger, you don't have, like, car payments and house payments and all that stuff, too. So, like, you could not work for a week, yeah. you know? But she was like, I need, like, she had a house, <laughs> you know? So she had, I was like, when she was apprenticing her, budget, her like bank account, she's like, do, 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 Like, till the, I think right before she started, we started giving her, like, she started making money off the apprentice tattoo. She was like, I only have like a thousand dollars left. <laughs> it's like, yeah. I don't know, I'm going to pay my rent next month, you know? Yeah. But you know I mean? Just like that desperate, like this needs to get done and I'll do what it has to do yeah. to yo, get it. Yo, when you guys uh, first started making money as a tattooer, what'd you spend it on? <laughs> Uh, I did the worst thing possible. I instantly elevated everything in my life to the money I had. <laughs> like, oh man, I'm making four hundred dollars a day. New apartment, new clothes. Car. You know, my girlfriend can move in. Don't worry, I'll pay your rent. You know, what I mean, yeah. it's like um, I've always had the same level of like extra cash because I've only just escalated my, my standard of living yeah. the entire yeah. time. The more you make. The more you spend, yeah. the yeah. more expensive your life costs to live. <laughs> right. It's like, crazy. Like, they'll literally make fun of me because, like, I'll joke, like, oh, I'm fucking broke. And they're like, how are you broke? Like, you own a shop, all these yeah. people. I'm like, I have four car payments. I have to pay for my mom to have a car. My wife has a car. And right. then I'm greedy and I have two cars. So it's yeah, like. Dan has a lot of cars. I have, like, so I'm just like. A lot of new cars. They're all new cars, yeah. yeah. So it's like. You well, know, you I also have four bro, cars. Bro, if I had the driveway you had, I'd fill it. What's that? Your driveway? Oh. <laughs> it's sick, dude. I've been like... On the mountaintop? I, yeah, dude. I got like a two-car garage. It's so limiting, dude. You know? You have this fucking whole road, yeah, crazy dude. Driveway, bro. I would have every car there is, man. I'm definitely working out. I expanded my driveway a couple years ago, too. Well, yeah. Vic just did that because she got a house Don't with a big driveway. That, dude. He'll buy another car. <laughs> bro, I would even yeah. wrap the driveway around the house so you could get more cars. They closed my road... Like during the winter, because that's how treacherous where I live is. It's like right. like people die if they can. I want people in an airplane to 
think that I own a car dealership when they go over my house. <laughs> I literally want to like like a buy here, pay here. I want to build a garage <laughs> into the mountain and have like an old yeah, Adam like West backpack. That'd be yeah. so fucking cool, bro. Like where you could just go in and it closes and it's just like yeah, dirt. Yeah, climate set. Because I had that mountain acres, but I live on a mountain, so. Yeah, yeah your it's house a, is cool. But yeah, so you start getting tattoo money and then you're just like, well, I think the first thing I bought was like machines because yeah. like I was using my uh, mentor's machines and I remember after like a month or two, he was like, you don't buy your own fucking shit. I'm cutting you down to 40%. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, yeah. oh, okay. Yeah. I was like, because I was just using his shit. So I was like, but yeah, buy an old Mickey Sharp, is, which is everyone did yeah, back then. Yeah, yeah. Bro. Yeah, That was the shit. That was the other thing, too. The industry just wasn't that big back then. You know, like everything was very, everyone knew. There was only like four things everybody knew about. So like, like you made money. You're like, I'm going to go get the Cadillac or, you know, Mercedes, right. the tattoo machine. I'm going to get thing, a Mickey the Sharp. The one thing. Yeah. Yeah. Like that's the one. Grass. <laughs> yeah. Then the first Cheyenne came out. Yep. And it was like, yo, if, like you see people using it, doing crazy tattoos. And you're like, oh, if I get that machine, I'll do tattoos like that. <laughs> well, that was the mentality. Yeah. It was like there was always this extra thing that, like, if you no. if I got that, I never did Ooh, tattoos that'd be like good. that. That machine didn't do it for me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm I many like years three of them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, the first tattoo I did with a rotary, which I, was the Cheyenne, when I was working in the uh, the second shop I was at. I did this really awesome cherub statue full color thing where the cherub was like breaking. It was like a little statue thing. I was like, oh, I fucking love it. It was like my favorite tattoo. I chewed that tattoo up. Oh, yeah. It fell yep. out completely. <laughs> I had no clue how to use a rotary. Yep. And I was, I was just doing like, oh, yeah, just fucking well, go. That's and the thing. Like, and like yeah. all these scratchers or apprentices, now they just come right in and they're just using Straight rotaries. cartridge right yeah. off the rip. Yeah. And it's like, you should learn. You got to learn the machines, man. That's That's... That's a learning curve itself is like switching from coils to a rotary pen. Right. Which is it's what like the girls going are doing from right a very sword different. to a lightsaber, dude. <laughs> yeah, you're like, it's, I swing it. And yeah. Like, yeah, no, it does two different things. I killed my client. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. you might want to. That looks like it's infected. So, yeah. Oops. Uh, you might want to go to the hospital. We're I had that doctors. feeling. <laughs> yeah, yeah. want to get some antibiotics. <laughs> you might want to see a dermatologist. <laughs> the, well, the first, I remember the first rotary machine when I was working was a. Uh, uh, it was like a Swiss. It was like a Swiss machine or something like that. And I remember saying, oh. like, if I get that Swiss machine, <laughs> then I'll be able to do rib tattoos. The swash, <laughs> you know? swash drive. Swash. So, yeah, yeah. Maybe a swash drive. Yeah. It was like Unimax had them. Yeah. yeah Unimax. <laughs> Shout out to Unimax, which yeah, kept yeah. me alive in New York City. Dude, that's where I. We couldn't even order stuff off the internet. All my then. piercing shit back in like oh nine. I just went there with like whatever money I had. Get saved some checker needles. After I left Florida. <laughs> no, I wasn't tattooing. Oh, you were tattooing. And I just spent money. I bought you know all the tools and jewelry, but. Yeah, Unimax, man, that that was great. Well, that was that my was job great. as apprentice. Was like I had to go get the supplies too. Yeah, and I was, you know, we're in Brooklyn, so like I had to hop on the train, go to Canal Street to go to, uh, you know, go to Unimax, and then I'd have to have five artists worth of fucking supplies in my hands, and they give you these shitty paper bags with this bird on it, and the paper <laughs> like handles would just burn my hand, and I'm sitting there, and it's like stuff like gallon of matisside, gallon oh, of rubbing yeah. alcohol, and you're right. just like Fuck green soap, yeah, green yeah. soap, you know, all by gallons, and then like needles for everybody, and you're just like, oh my god, just trying to carry that back was so much fun, but now you just they just show up Amazon. in the mail, yeah, <laughs> or yeah, Amazon, they, yeah, you can Amazon yeah. stuff. So. That's how you know the scratcher machines are scratcher machines because when you go on Amazon, they're called they're actually called guns. Oh, I've tattoo seen guns. That. And I got into an argument I've with someone on, that. like on the comments, and they're like, "I'm like, you know how I know you're a scratcher because you call it a gun." They're like, "That's what it's called." So I'm like, "Going Amazon." That's what the I'm Amazon like, link said. Damn, Amazon does call it a gun. That's Dude, crazy. my old boss called them guns. Yeah, he called them guns, and he called his tubes fucking barrels. <laughs> 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 yeah, dude. Uh, actually, like, my Brian, one mentor dude. did that. My too. man barrels. said barrels. Yeah, he was like, right, I have not I heard go that. Clean one. my barrels. <laughs> what the fuck, dude? Damn, you're right. I forgot gun about that. and barrels. I tried to forget that. I told and you I brought it back. That. I'm like, it's kind of fire. That's the first what time the I heard that. I'm Where gonna did use that, that come now? from? Who the fuck? Give me barrels. a seven type bullet. <laughs> <laughs> this is a seven, not seven millimeter, seven millimeter, twenty, yeah. mag, 20 mag, mags. Yeah, uh, dude. But yeah, all we used was like five liner or seven liner. And seven mags and nine mags. Yeah, yeah that was yeah. it. Yeah. Seven, that's all we seven. Had. That's all, that's I all you needed years. to create this a shitty tattoo. This dude had me literally learning with lining <laughs> shit with a five liner and filling shit in with a seven mag. What else? I'm do wondering you need? why my tattoos suck. What else, what else do you need? need? <laughs> I'm spoiled now. I have like oh damn ten Da Vinci cartridges out. Uh, this, dude, yeah. this dude, I have 
10, 15 cartridges out on its head. So I'll have two different kinds of threes, every a five size, line, though, or seven, dude, like, seven round shader, nine round shader. Like, yeah. Nine mag, 11 mag, 13 mag. It's like, what's the difference between those? Bro, I'll, <laughs> two? I'll literally <laughs> two. put out, by the end of the tattoo, I'll put out five threes. Three liners. <laughs> I'll use it for like an hour and I'll be like, nah, I don't like the flow on this. Oh, well, the threes are hard because they're so tight. I right. Like just and the then, skin can like clog it and yeah, stuff. But no, I like, I won't throw it out. I'll just put it there and I'll be like, no, you maybe, won't look at it. Maybe it'll get better in an hour <laughs> from doing nothing. Wait, this one's maybe, And then, dude, and I have like seven needles out. And then, like, Logan will be like, what do you use? And I'm like, a three. He's like, what else? I'm like, all right, we're done. <laughs> Enough learning for today. <laughs> Let me see your pants. Are you even gleeked up? What? You have clean pants? Me? Do you have like all your tattoo pants? You got the gleek, the little, you know, like, you know, gleek is cam. You know, like when your mouth's open, you're like a little saliva shoots out. Do we get that? No, you're like tattooing. Like Did you get ink over your pants? So uh, I don't. I'm actually like really, because I always like wear nice clothes. Yeah. yeah. You're not sloppy. Like, I'm sloppy. I don't. I'm sloppy tattooing. Yeah. I mean, I got an apron. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, you do like black um, and shit. That gets yeah, messy. it gets messy, dude. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah one of, uh, I just ruined some shoes the other day. But I've learned to, like, not wear stuff that I love. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm because careful. I still will, man. I've it. recently just switched to, like, only black bottoms, though. Yeah. Like, I refuse to wear, like, blue jeans or anything. Yeah, any, any like, lighter black. jeans that I wear, That's they all have little splashes tattooer. on them. Let's just, yeah, <laughs> so. When you're a good tattooer... Yeah. You can wear whatever you want. Yeah. <laughs> you just Lesson. said, yeah. 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 It's like nah, but you. sometimes, like, I'll wear some, like, shoes that I fucking love. Shoes can take it. And yeah. I'm like. Take them under the station or under the bed. Nah, bro, I don't change nothing. I'm just like, your, your move, God. <laughs> <laughs> I do have, I bought from uh, the dudes that, I think their company is, like, Tattoo Apron or something like that. They make shoe covers. Like yeah. little booties like, for like, like if you go into like a house that you're rubbery in. plastic material mm. and you kind of like pull them over. I've thought about getting the ones that you like step into, like hair nets, like almost like sneakers. scrubbing up your shoes. Yeah. yeah, my wife used to do real estate. And she had those, like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But yeah, that's what's always funny about the shoe talk because then it's like I was like, oh, this shoe, this shoe, and it's like, and yeah, then you, you wear have it to so work. many pairs of shoes, but I don't get to wear them because I, all I do is work. Yeah. So I mean, that's why I he'll sold send me so he'll many shoes. Yeah, but if I really picture like a piece of like ink on some shoe and you're like. If I yeah, really yeah. love the shoe, I'm not going to wear it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? That stays in the box because yeah, it's my favorite. Yeah, bro. Yeah. I'll, I'll just take a picture it. of it. Yeah. Fuck no. <laughs> yeah, and I have a three-year-old and a, you know, I have two toddlers, a year and a half, and a, and a three-year-old. Right. like nothing is safe, dude. Right. Yeah. Even on my days off, yeah. if I'm not, you know, getting tattoo ink on me, it's like they're messy. Whatever yeah. they eat or drink, mm. it's like it's all over me, dude. I bought a brand new fucking Louis Vuitton jacket. We went out to eat. We had put our coats in the corner yeah. of the booth. Somehow mine ended up on top. My one-year-old is over there with a fucking butter knife with, like, butter on it. All over my jacket, bro. First <laughs> yeah. day. It was He's like probably going to eat it, it, dude. He's probably going to eat your jacket. <laughs> Buttering that thing was, up. I'm telling my girl, I'm like, yo, is he, like, buttering up my jacket right now, dude? And it was just fucking greasy butter stain down the sleeve. Pets Damn. are good for that. It's like, easier oh, to put on, man. 4,000 bucks, bro. <laughs> You're just telling me how many things your cats have destroyed, too. It's yeah, like, the cats uh, The cats were Dude, on, like, I found a fucking shoebox this morning. They were just like Bucked peeing on stuff, dude. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. From the cat? Yeah, torn up. Dude, That's why you need to boxes. move out. Well, he'd probably come with me. <laughs> what, your cat? Yeah. You still live with Wait, you live with your parents? dog. Yeah. I'm not uh, my mom. His roommates. Oh, roommates. Oh. Yeah, I fucking pay more for rent than she does. <laughs> Wait, you have roommates? Had- my mother. Oh, <laughs> Just this girl I've known my whole life. <laughs> <laughs> we're real close. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's like we're family. Yeah. <laughs> She's always around. <laughs> All Georgia. right, we got to shut this one down okay. so we can get to the Patreon. Okay. Ooh. We, yeah. Oh, shit talk hour? Oh, yeah. I'm excited. Um, Cam? Oh, yeah. No, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> wow, the shirt is actually really nice. If you haven't already, you need to check out themodelcitizenapparel.com. It has the best tattoo clothing I've ever seen. And I'm quite a critic when it comes to fashion, clothing, whatever. The design has to be cool and the material has to be comfortable, at least form fitting. They have a range of styles from vintage to modern. They're continuing to work 
with new artists featuring new designs and articles of clothing you need to check out this company the model citizen apparel.com or you can check out their social media which is model citizen apparel it's the best